Ladies and gentlemen. This way, this way, this way, this way, this way. Where's it going to work better? Back, 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 back. Oh, hello. That's about right. Oh, dear. Am I going to I'm going to be battling with the tone. But I think we'll be, I think we'll be all right. Now, you know the bit where the guy came on to introduce the Beatles and said, I'm afraid neither John Lennon nor Paul McCartney can make it tonight. Um, I feel a bit like that right now, because uh, sadly, as I mentioned, Luke Harvey uh, still hasn't been dug out of his palatial home in Lambourne, and uh, we are without Rich Ritchie. Now, I could put on a trilby and a pair of shades and say, come on, Fahina is a certainty. Um, we're just going to have to play Harvey and Ritchie during the course of the evening. I'm going to have to enlist your help with that. But I would like to welcome, with the assistance of the audio system, which is going to start playing ball soon, I hope, uh, two tremendous guests who are going to give you winners and plenty of winners for the Cheltenham Festival. So please, first of all, uh, welcome the betting editor of the Racing Post, Mr. Paul Keeley, ladies and gentlemen. Right, I feel better now, I feel better. We got someone popular on the stage and we're gonna have somebody even more popular on the stage now. He is a man who has every facet of Irish racing covered. He is the deputy, de deputy? deputy editor of the Irish Racing Post, Mr. David Jennings. <laughs> try there, try there, I'm gonna, I, I, I'm gonna sit here and hope. Right, can everybody hear okay at the back? We are going to fill up Mr. Jennings' glass, we're going to fill up Mr. Keeley's glass right to the brim, and we are going to try and tip you a few winners for this year's Cheltenham Festival. How many of you going to Cheltenham this year? Yay! Look at that. It's going to be a good crowd. If you see this, it's the first time, Paul Keeley, you're going to go all four days to the Cheltenham Festival. Yeah, first time in my life. Uh, never done it before, so I thought I'd better do it once in my life before I die, which won't be long, but I won't drink so much. But, uh, <coughs> But yeah, we'll be there. So if you see me come say hello, um, I'll, I'll be around all day. I'm not getting any corporate hospitality at all. Can you not hear anything at all, will you? Is that better, yeah? Right, apologise. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm going all four days, so come and see me. I will be there. I'm not getting any corporate hospitality at all. So if you've got any boxes, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. <laughs> Paul Keeley RP at Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> so while you're enjoying corporate hospitality, David Jennings, you are going to be at the coalface, working hard, reporting hard, backing plenty of winners. How are you feeling? Yeah, well, it's the best week of the year, obviously. It's, I won't be as, as lucky as Paul. I won't be out till 4 o'clock every night. Won't be playing poker. Won't be in the 21 club. I'll be the one doing all, I'll be basically paying his wages, that's what I'll be at. But uh, it's, it's a fantastic week, because you know, even if you're working at it, it's, it's the dream job if you're working during Cheltenham for the, for the four days, it's fantastic. Can't wait. Sometimes, sometimes it pays during Cheltenham to be out at four o'clock in the morning, shivering your nuts off, waiting for a taxi uh, by the chippy. As Tom Siegel found out a few years ago, I was standing with him outside the kebab shop in Cheltenham, waiting for a taxi, trying to get something to eat. We'd had a lot to drink, and a fellow walked up, Kim Bailey's assistant trainer. He said, how are you, Matt? He said, I'm fine, Tom. He said, Dana is an absolute certainty in two days' time. He's had a wind operation, but nobody knows about it yet. In the Racing Post the next day, I would advise a small each way bet on Dana at 50 to one, says Siegel. <laughs> there you go. Look, the you don't have to show you're working, you just have to get the right result to go to the windows and collect. But, but plenty of working will be shown now. We will launch straight into the first couple of days. We'll take a pause and then we'll do the final two days and then there'll be time for questions as well. The audio is calming down, which is good news. Keels, while, while, while you're waiting for your wine to be filled up, I want David Jennings to kick us off by telling us who is going to win the Supreme Novices Hurdle. Quite simple. Uh, yeah, well, I wish it was that simple. Look, if, if, if all the horses were the same price, you'd, I think most of us here, and I'm sure everybody here, and if Rich was here, he'd be telling us that we all should be back and get a bird. And get a bird is probably the most likely winner. Uh, Willie Mullins is very unlucky not to have won this race for five years in a row. Champagne Fever, Vautour, Duvan. And then in the last two years, it was only a freak in Altior 
that beat Min, and obviously Mellon was beaten by another freak in Le Bake. So slightly different type of freak. yeah, slightly yeah. different, different individual. Yeah, a bit of a headbanger, but he could be going for six in a row. And I'd say get a bird. And and speaking to Rich yesterday, it's somewhere in between. I'd say those. If, if you count up all those six, he's probably third or fourth, I'd say, which might be good enough, actually, to win the race this year because it's not a vintage Supreme. It's, it's not even nearly a vintage Supreme. It's a pretty poor race. The ones, I think, at the prices that you've got to back now, there's two at big prices. The other one of richest is Sharjah, who ran an absolute stinker in the Deloitte. Uh, Patrick Mullins did a show with us in the Race and Post studio in Ireland before the Deloitte, and he said that how any horse could possibly be odds-on against Sar Sharjah was beyond him. That was obviously Sam Crow. He said, this horse is a proper horse and he would love to ride him in Cheltenham. Uh, he did a brilliant piece of work last week. He's back to himself. He'll enjoy better ground at Cheltenham. Paul Keeley will tell you very soon what incredible price he's backed him at for Cheltenham. And uh, the other horse I like in the race is Paloma Blue, trained by Henry de Bromhead. If you go through the race, he's, he's just gradually improving all the time. He was second in a grade one bumper last year to Faye and A. He beat Impact Factor, I thought, quite impressively. And if you go back to Deloitte, he was the only one that went with Sam Crow from the second last to the last. He paid the price, he got close to the last, but apparently he's working very well. Davy Russell is riding it. I think there's still a bit of 16s available. I think he'll go off a single figure price. I like that. Paloma Blue and Sharjah. Sharjah is now freely available at 22, 25 to one. Paul, and you, you lucky man, got Sharjah at? Sevens. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, uh, I, I, I backed it straight after the, um, straight after, it was a world bond, wasn't it, when it fell, um, and then I backed it again at sevens, uh, the day, the morning of the race against Sam Crow, just so, you know, she's absolute certainty, it won't run if it gets thumped, uh, and when it wins, it'll be the even money favourite that, that Rich Ritchie and Willie Mullins always have, and of course, he, he gets thumped, and now he's running, but why is he running? He could have, he could have been entered in the county, he could have run in another novice hurdle, and I'm absolutely convinced that they're not convinced about Getterbird, and there's one reason. How many of you back Getterbird? How many? How many of you? You know, want to put, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six. A lot of people seven, eight to one. Yeah. Now, if you've got eight to one, you can be sitting there feeling pretty confident and happy with yourself, right? But there's one problem. There is one problem with the horse, and it's just been started to be talked about lately. They're worried about it going left-handed. All its races, all, all its races over hurdles have been right-handed. He ran in the point, first time in his life on a, on a race course, ran in the point. He dived wildly right at the first, and he ran out at the second. Now, obviously, that is the first, that is the first run of his life. It might just have been total greenness, but there is a worry about it. Apparently, Gordon Elliott has convinced it won't go that way. Davy Russell has said it'll definitely be on his inside and not on his outside. So, you have to worry about that. To me... Sharjah is still a very good horse. You ignore that run last time when he didn't like the ground and you know, he had his head up in the air from the start as well. Um, I think he's still a very good horse and he's got a chance. I will, I will top up again, I'll have to. Uh, just, so I can have, just so I can average out at least at double figures. You know, Quite so, up now. You know, yeah, you keep going, you know. But, uh, but, you know, the horse with the best form in the race, the horse with the best form in the race is Kalashnikov. That, that bit of fair hurdle form is fantastic. That was... You know, it's the most competitive handicap hurdle run in Britain all year. Uh, 24 runners. And there were, there were literally 10 horses going to the second last, all within a length or two of each other. And they've ended up, they've ended up stringing them right out. And, and I just think that was a really, really good piece of form. Trainer is so convinced that he's going to be better on better ground as well. And, you know, obviously, I mean, Dave will, Dave will piss on this one, but he said, you know, if, if it was trained by Nicky Henderson and won the race like that, It'd be five to two. Yeah, exactly. Oh, uh, somebody made a very valid point there in the audience. It's not trained by Willie Mullins. It's not trained by Nicky Henderson. It's trained by Amy Murphy. And uh, just like the ground, just like it's jumping, that's factored into the price. Of course it is. I, I understand it's that. bullshit. But, you know, she's managed to win. <laughs> she's managed to win the best handicap hurdle of the year yeah. with a novice. Right, so she can train. Yeah, of course and that's she can the whole train, point. Yeah, I mean, you know, she's not really people would have been, people would have said like, you know, 20 years ago, you know, if it, if it was trained by someone other than Paul Nichols, it would have been after price. She might just be a very good trainer. Yeah. If my aunt had balls, she'd be my aunt. <laughs> yeah, but Fanny Andy won it last year. Sorry? Fanny Andy won that race. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was a shit race last year. It was only 15 <laughs> runners. <laughs> no, 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 so, 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 it was one of the weirdest spread for hurdles last year. Right? It's got it's the richest two mile handicap hurdle in the race. Only 15 went to post, had a maximum field of, of uh, 24. Seven of the horses who ran in that race wouldn't have got into the county hurdle. 
uh, which had like 40 horses balloted out. It's bonkers. What happened that year, I don't know, but it was a shit race last year. It was miles better than this year. Yeah, I'm a big Kalashnikov fan as well. Um, Dave, just remind us of your two again. I think the two with the prizes that will go off much shorter today, certainly Paloma Blue will go off shorter. The Davy Russell factor, it's, it's working well. Um, I think that'll go off shorter at 16s at the moment. And Sharjah, as Paul said, he won't go off 7 to 1, but he won't go off 25 to 1 either. So they'd be my two at prices. I'm worried. No, no, you can't leave us as well. You're not allowed to leave. You're not. And then there were two. I tell you what, this is going to be like an Alan Bennett monologue by the time I finish. Right. <laughs> is that it? <laughs> right. Right, right. Well, um, well. <laughs> While Paul Keeley empties his bed bag into that glass, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about the Arkle, which could be, we always say this every year, David, it could be the race of the meeting. There's nothing more exciting than high class two mile novices going hammer and tongs. People always think they've got a, a floor in here, a chink in the armor there, but it looks like we've got four or five real ones in the Arkle this time. Yeah, certainly it looks, it looks a really good race. And of all the races, the first day especially, this is the race, I think. Would you agree that the race you're most looking forward to? Because you've got, you've got five horses in here that would win a normal Arkle, I think. I think they're all very good. Footpad is an exceptional jumper. He is. Like, Nick and, and Paul will, will probably say something similar. He's as good a jumping novice as I've seen in a long, long time, certainly in the last 10 years. He's just flawless. He loves jumping. Um, I, I was reasonably impressed last time at Leperstown, but Petit Mouchoir hit two of the first three fences. It was his first run in a while, and I'd imagine that tactics will be completely reversed in Cheltenham. I'd imagine that Petit Mouchoir, who, who grows in confidence when, when he can front run, I'd imagine he'll be ridden far more positively than he was at Leperstown. And then you've obviously got Sco Royal and you've got St. Calvados. I've no idea what's going to fall on us. Is that a train or have you had a bad curry? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. Maybe it's Rich coming. But um, <laughs> the, the, the horse I fancy, and there's going to be so many groans from the audience, is, bra is brain power. <laughs> Let me explain. <laughs> uh, I, I said this yesterday. The, the analogy I use for, uh, for brain power is... Do you remember when some of you were in college or, or university, as you call it over here, and there was this really fit girl that you fancied and you thought she was absolutely gorgeous. And you couldn't stop looking at her when you're in your lecture hall and you're just staring at her and you're amazed by her. And then you met her three years down the line in the pub and she put on a load of weight. She was really fat. She had spots and she was pregnant. But you were still saying to yourself, oh God, she was gorgeous in college and you still fancied her. That's where I am with brain power. <laughs> I think, I think... I think he's the horse with the most ability in the race. And if you ask anybody that works in Nicky Henderson's yard, they will tell you this horse is an incredible workhorse. And I know there are morning glories that don't translate that to the track. But this horse is the only horse that can work with Altior. He's a horse that can beat Beauvoir there in any gallop. He's exceptional. And I think, he's, he, I think his jumping is good. It was very good at Kempton. And... I think the wind up will certainly help. He looked like a horse that needed a wind up. He looked to be gasping for his breath when he fell at, at, uh, at Ascot behind under so. And look, you're getting a double figure price to find out if brain power is actually top class. You're not backing the horse at five to two, you're backing him at 12 to one. And I'm willing to take the chance, sorry. Mr. David Jennings, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um, Paul, take him down. You're never gonna get those two minutes back, lads. <laughs> What a load of shit. <laughs> I spoke to Fitzy on uh, Monday night. He said uh, he's a great jumper. Or he's a shite jumper. He's scared. Right? He even meets him absolutely peace. He scores him at home. How can he be he, a great jumper or yeah, a shite well, jumper? Well, apparently, if, if he meets him right, he flies over him. But if he gets into it, he has got, got the faintest idea what to do. And he, he just like, jumps scared, he said. You know what I mean? He pulls himself like, don't know what to do. You know what I mean? So he lose ground like that. Anyway, he's run twice at Cheltenham and run absolutely shite both times, isn't he? he, he all his form is right-handed. He is a very, very talented horse, but, you know, I don't know why we're wasting time on him, to be honest. There's four more likely winners. There's only three of us on the panel. I had to do something. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
don't fancy uh, him much, do you? No, no, no. He's got, he's got no chance. Now, you know, we all know, you know, Footbed probably is the most likely winner, but he's, he's run at Cheltenham for the last two years, and he didn't look like he was fast enough to two miles both times on good ground. Uh, obviously, all his form, uh, all his form this season, he's been ridden differently from the front rather than rather than held up as he was over hurdles, and he does jump really well. But he's only actually beaten one really, really good horse, and that's Petit Moussoir. He wasn't off. Um, you know, he, he, that was his first run since um, October, so they wanted to actually give him some confidence. God, that is a curry. <laughs> they, they wanted to give him some confidence, so they, they went from behind. There is not a prayer in hell that that horse would be behind footpad after two fences uh, of the Arkle. Not in a million years. So the race is going to be run differently, but it's also going to be run extremely fast, because St. Calvados is a very good horse. I wouldn't mind betting he's the best horse in the race on soft ground. But his knee action is really high, and I'm, I'm absolutely certain he wants soft ground. It might, and it might be on the softer side. It, it, it might do. It, it might do, but, you know, we all talk about this in the few weeks. He only needs three or four dry days yep. at Cheltenham, and then, yep. and then it's fastest ground again. True. It'll almost certainly be faster than he has been running on the money. You know, so, so I, I, you know, for me, they're going to go really fast. Footbad's going to be tested. You know, he wasn't a superstar at four. He wasn't a superstar at five. I'm struggling to believe that he's a superstar... <laughs> Even money at six, you know, and there are, you know, there are three other horses who are good enough to win average, an average arcle at least. And the two of them we mentioned, and the one that's going to get the race run to suit is so royal, is just going to sit behind uh, and pick them off, and he'll definitely finish in the first three. There we are. So royal, definitely in the first three. Brain power for David Jennings. Who, who is with David? Is anyone in the audience with David? I'll get you a point later. Right. <laughs> the, good news, the good news is, the good news is, gents and ladies, that in the interval, as a, as a gesture from Mr. Ritchie, because he can't make it, it's a free bar. So you can get him a pint in the interval. Well, that went down. That, that got a fairly muted response, didn't it? I've never known a, I've never known a free bar that go down so badly. Right. All righty. <laughs> okay. While you uh, while you uh, while you digest while you digest that while you digest that, um, we'll we'll press on and talk about the champion hurdle. This might not take very long, might it, David Jennings? It might not take very long. Can you see any realistic opposition to Boover there? Yeah, usually, no matter what I'm saying, it takes very long. But this is going to be very swift. Bouvard Air, like it's funny, we were talking yesterday and we were saying if, if, if Bouvard Air was 100% and, and um, Faheen was 100%, who. Yeah. yeah. So, quick, oh, I'll do your job for you here, Nick. A quick kind of, uh, what, what do you call this? Uh, poll. Yeah, poll, yeah. <laughs> poll is the word I'm looking for. I think there's something else, but a quick shout if you think 100%, 100 Faheen or 100% Bouvard Air. 100% Faheen? Yeah! 100% Bouvard Air? Yeah. 100% Brain Power? <laughs> but it, it, it's funny, I, I think possibly Faheen would beat Bouvard Air if he was 100%. But yet Bouvard Air was far more impressive in winning his champion hurdle than, than Faheen was. I thought Bouvard Air was fantastic last year. He's such a slick jumper, he's gorgeous to watch in action. And uh, yeah, he wins, it's simple as that. I, I can't see how Faheen will come back to the form of, of two years ago. There's plenty of each way alternatives in this race, and there's plenty of each way alternatives without Boover there. And the one I came down on that I think is the only horse in the race that's value in that market is Mick Jazz, because he's the only horse in the race that's, that's on an upward curve. He's won a grade one. I know Faheen was very disappointing, but he was third to Super Sunda and Faheen last time. He's getting better, and so many of these are getting worse. And I think he'll scrape into a place. You can back him at 12 to 1 each way, three places quarter the odds without Boover there, and I think that's a good bet. I, I think there could be only seven or eight runners, and I think he'll sneak into a place. Yeah, Rich seemed quite confident last night that Faheen didn't seem confident that he'd win, but he seemed confident that he could get back to the sort of form that he was in at the beginning of this season, which would make it a very, very tight affair. What do you think, Hills? Yeah, well, he looked great when he came, when he, when he came back, but then, he, but, but then he got beat, and then he got beat by Super Sunday. Now, I know Super Sunday's favourite for the stay as Erdl, but I don't think he's that good, and I certainly don't think he's that good at two miles. So I think that's, you know, I, I can't have that for. We all know Bouverdere's the most likely winner. I'm, you know what I'm like. I, I like to oppose all favourites. I'll find something each way, whatever. My, my, my only concern with Bouverdere really is that he might have forgotten how to race because he hasn't had a race. 
and he actually had to get shaken up to beat John Constable last time. And it's like, you know, well, shit, what am I doing? Like, you know, and he's going to run in. A, he's going to run in a much better race. He's probably good enough anyway because once he gets going, he's, you know, he needs he needs riding a little bit just to get up to full speed. And when he gets there, he does it easily. Right? I expect him to win, but I've backed Wicklow Brave each way. I've backed Wicklow Brave without the favourite. Last year he ran in a race. He was a big price last year. He, whipped, he, he didn't whip round, but he lost ground at the start. And he still traded at three to one in running, going to the second last, because he was absolutely cantering. You've got to remember, he's a grade one winner on the flat. He won the, he won the grade one at Punchestown afterwards, beating my tent of yours. He's been working really well. He's been getting nibbled at today, apparently. Uh, in the market. Last night, that's why he's been nibbled out today. Everyone was pissed last night, no one will remember that. <laughs> uh, you know, he, you know, look, each way without, I think you can still get about eight to one. I think that's a cracking bet. I don't think there are many who can. Obviously, my tent or yours will run. Will run is normal solid race. Um, everyone loves my tent or yours. Um, he's got his chance of being in the frame again. But for me, Wicklow Brave is the value. There we are, Wicklow Brave against, well, against the favourite, and perhaps without the favourite, Mick Jazz, who won that grade one a couple of starts ago and finished third last time. Um, I, I don't really want to make it a free-for-all until the end, but if anyone's got any left field champion hurdle suggestions, we're very happy to shout them up or shout them down. Right, let, let's take them then. Your kill first of all. Now, it's not, you're not going to fall off your chair if he wins, David, are you? But it's, it's going to be unorthodox, to say the least. Yeah, I, I, would, I, would, I would definitely say that York Hill is probably the most hated horse in training because I think we all know just how good he can be. And we've seen it in the JLT. We've seen it when he beat Janworth in the Neptune. He has an exceptional amount of ability, but he really thinks about it. He properly thinks about it. Uh, David Casey, who rides him out at home, was on board when I was in Clay Sutton on Monday. He, he, worked, like he, he was moving nicely, but that was obviously just a couple of laps uh, around the all-weather track. But he's, he's an enigma. He's an absolute enigma. He's 60-40 to run in this race. That's what Willie said. But I got the impression, standing in the sitting room, I got the impression that it was more 80-20 in favour of running the champion hurdle. I don't think he's going to run the Ryanair. I, 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 look, he's, he's just a horrible horse to figure out because... He could pop up and win the race, but, but he's running shocking all year. Like, he wouldn't win, a, as you said last night, he wouldn't win a seller with his form this season. He looks to have lost interest in the game, and you're just cutting back. It's just one of them. You have to let it run, and if it wins, well, let it win, because you, you're cutting back it. Now, I'm very grateful to the gentleman in the front row. I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Richie. Richie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, jeez, I can't believe I fell for that. Well, I'm grateful anyway, um, because I was going to say Verdana Blue, and I thought, no, I'm not going to say that, because everyone thinks I can, I'm a, even more of a plank than I am. Um, but you said it, so I'll say it. I think she could run well, if the ground's good. I think she could run well. I don't think she could win. I think she can run well, each way without the favourite, definitely, because she's got loads of speed, some very good handicap form, and she tanked through the Betfair hurdle, didn't get home in the conditions. So I don't think you're bonkers if you uh, think Banana Blue could run well. She's going to run in this. No, I think she's going to run in this. She definitely runs in this. Uh, the owners are really keen to run in yeah, this. Yeah, Charlie Parker. She's, she's one of them, like McJazz. She could just sneak into a place. Yeah. OK, that is or that was the champion hurdle. We'll have a very quick word about the mayor's hurdle. Then we'll move on to the second day. We're going to cover the handicaps at the end because these boys have both got lists of handicappers to back. I mean loads and loads of them. So pens and paper at the very end of the show. Uh, but a quick word on the mayor's hurdle. Again, it's apples, jade or no apples, jade. Paul. Uh, yeah, I mean, ap ap apples, jade has obviously got the best form in a race. I think you win. Um, it's not a race that really, really, you know, sets my pulse racing. I'd actually rather they didn't have these mares races and she ran in the Stayers Hurdle because I think she'd go very close. Um, she's by far the best horse in the race. As long as the ground isn't really fast, which it can't be on Tuesday, she'll be fine. Um, and I can't really see... Let me just grab this. Uh, yeah, the, the, the Bagger Roy is, is, the, is the mare that I like. I'm pretty sure Warren Greatrex is keen on going for the Stayers Hurdle. Um, because she wants, she does want three miles. She does want three miles. So close to his chest. Yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, we, if anything happens to Apple's Jade, she runs in the mare straight away, doesn't she? We all know that. So you've got, you've, 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 you've got to think about that. Um, you know, Richie last night was saying that he definitely won't run all three in this race. 
And the, 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 short, the shortest price runner that he's got in it is Let's Dance, and that's the one they're thinking of running in the stairs. He, he was big on this Benny De Dieu, wasn't he? Yeah, he was very, very strong on Benny De Dieu. Now, you know, I, I never got the talk, chance to talk about that last time. They seem to absolutely love her. Her form would give her a shot of being in the, fra in the frame in this race, but, you know, they were talking about the Ryanair. She'd need to improve at least 20 pounds on what she's done there. She might be, she might be that good, but I, I, I don't know. You, what, She's been running over fences. Why would you want to back her in a, in a hurdle race? I just think Apple's Jade is, is a proper mare, very, very good, uh, and she'll win. David? <coughs> yeah, I think Apple's Jade will probably win all right. There's, a, there's only one, one negative with Apple's Jade, and it's just the break. Just Phillies after a break is obviously a little bit of a concern. She hasn't ran since Christmas, but she, she's just exceptional. She knows how to win, and when you know how to win, it's crucial. Benny's to do is extremely talented, possibly even more talented than Vroom Vroom Mag. But I'm just petrified that if she wins this race, we won't see her over fences again, which would be a travesty, because she's as good as jumper as you'd see. She's such a good jumper, and she's so quick that she actually, as Rich said last night, she almost injures herself as she, as she jumps. She hurts her joints in her back as she jumps. That's why she needs time between her races. And uh, she's going to run in this race. Let's Dance is going to run in the stairs hurdle, as Paul said. And she, she has loads of ability, and, and she could even turn up in something like the Melling Chase at Aintree. She's got so much ability. She, I think she will be a grade one chaser in time. I could certainly see her being placed, and if, obviously, Let's Dance goes for the stairs, you're going to see Benny's to do. Her price is just going to, just going to crumble, and she could go off about 7-2 to two or 4-1. to one. She probably won't beat Apple's Shade, though. And just the forgotten horse of the race is Jer's Girl, trained by uh, Gavin Cromwell. Fell in the race last year. She's had a couple of problems all the way along, but I think she's gradually just coming back to herself. She's been away to Martinstown, and uh, I'd say Jer's girl will be overlooked, overpriced, and could run well. Will you uh, <laughs> just excuse me while I, uh, while I empty Paul Keeley's catheter? Um, there we are. Oh, doesn't that look nice? Um, on to the Ballymore Novices Hurdle, the first day, uh, the first race even on. Uh, we'll come to the National Hunt Chase later, don't worry. Don't worry, it'll get mentioned in dispatches. Now, the gentleman in the front row here says, we don't need to talk about the Ballymore, David, because Sam Crow wins. Keels, do you want to have first, first crack at this? He's going to lay it. You're going to lay Sam Crow? No, no, no I'm not going to lay it. I, I, you told me last night you were going to lay it. No, that wasn't that one. No? no. Uh, I'm all right. I'm all right. Don't get me wrong. Um, look. Four of, the, four of the last seven favourites in this race have been beaten at two to one or short. But Denman got beat in this race years ago. Right? He is, you know, he's going to be a staying chaser. He's obviously very good. He might be a superstar. Part of me wants him to be a superstar. But he got shortened from around about two to one to four to six after winning a race that took no winning. Uh, and that's, the, that's just the thing that worries me about the prices. That, that race he won last time, it just fell apart. There were, there, were, there were good horses that were fancied there, and they just didn't run them their races. Now, if you look at the time of the races, they were two seconds slower than the juvenile, than the juvenile race won by Mr. Adjudicator from Farquhar's, and, they were, and the four-year-olds were faster at every stage of the race, and from two out to the line, both of them were a good half a dozen lengths faster than Sam Crow was. So it did not need to be that good to win that race. Now, yeah, obviously you said that was two miles, the horses would stay, he'll... He, 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 probably be far better suited to two mile five furlong. He's the right favourite, he's the right short price favourite, and he might win, and he probably will win. But I can't, I can't, I can't get excited about short odds. If you've had an anti-post bet at a decent price, fair enough. Right, the horse I like in the race is Black Op, trained by Tom George. Now, I think he's a very interesting horse, because he wants good, he definitely wants good ground. His bumper form tells you that. He beat Claim and Take and Fork the first time out last season, uh, just before the Cheltenham bumper, and he went on to be uh, around about fifth in the bumper. And, and then this season, he's, he's just sort of gradually improved, won very easily as penultimate start, and then at Cheltenham last time, he was cantering all over him. And he just, I think the jockey went too soon, um, and then he made a mistake at the last, and, and he got picked up by Santini. Now, if you listen to Nicky Henderson talk about Santini, this horse is a gold cup horse. Like, you know what I mean? They absolutely love him. Like, you know, and... He only just got beat on. He traded at 25 to 1 on to win that race and got beat. On better ground, it'll travel well. He's still about 16 to 1. He should be much shorter than that. 
and uh, I think it'd be in a frame. And if you're talking about Black Op, you need to talk about Somerville Boy as well, because they're in the same ownership by the same stallion, Sam Mason, trained by the same guy. They're going to try and run him in two different races. Tom doesn't want to go up to three miles with Black Op, which means he has to run him here, which means Somerville Boy must run in the Supreme Novices. It doesn't take Einstein to work it out, even though I think he's still got a bit persuading of the owners to do. But I'm with you. I think Black Op could run very well. What about on the blind side, who's been talked for this since the winter hurdle at Sandown? I'm getting slightly dodgy vibes about him now. I just wonder whether whether he's quite sparking as he was. Well, you know, he's potentially very good and he looked brilliant at Sandown, but the, the, the worry with me is when you see a horse run at Cheltenham and not handle the downhill stretch as he did. You remember, he won that race. It wasn't a bad race. It worked out well. But he traded at 40-something in running, coming down the hill, because he just, he just lost his... You know, he almost lost his action. He, he wasn't going anywhere. And then suddenly, as soon as he hit the uphill rise, he flew again. But, you know, that's in, you know, that's in a trial race, a small race... In a big race like that, he's not going to have the time to get back up and, and do it, and I can't really have him at the price. I mean, there's a lot in your, in your little uh, booklets here. There's a lot of horses that are double treble entered that aren't going to be running here. Um, Getter Bird's not going to run here. I don't think Duke de Genieva is going to run here. Kalashnikov's not going to run here. If the cat fits, is out. Um, Vindication's an interesting horse if he runs, but I think he'll go the other race. OK, Corral could run, Nicky Henderson said, but he looks at his handicap mark and said he might go for the Coral Cup. David, the Ballymore. Yeah, I, I'm a big believer in Sam Crow. Uh, I, think, I think what Paul has said in a roundabout way has basically enhanced uh, Sam Crow's claims because the, the time was so slow in the Deloitte. And as, as you said, the time of the race is much slower than the, the, than the juvenile hurdle. If you've got a stare that they think is going to win a Gold Cup in a couple of years that needs further, that's running in a two-mile hurdle around Leopardstown on the inside track, and he was still good enough to absolutely annihilate them, even though it should have been a speed test because they went so slow. That's another, that's another basically, another positive to add to Sam Crow, that he does have a turn of foot. He's, he's an exceptional horse. I think he's, he's probably, you hear all this bullshit of preview nights about machines and engines and aeroplanes. I think he's the best young horse in training in Ireland or England. I think he will potentially win a Gold Cup someday, and I think he'll win this race. As regards a point you made there, Nick, vindication. Uh, me and Paul stayed behind in the other preview night last night. We met that one of the nicest guys you'd ever meet. I think he bought Vindication for the owners uh, who own him now. That's with Kim Bailey. And he told us that he was going to run in this race. This is the best horse that Kim Bailey has. And it's the best horse he's had for a long, long time. And he's got a lot of good novice hurdlers this he season. He has got first flow, obviously, Red River. He's got a lot of good novices. This is the best of them. And uh, he's going to run in this race. This was what the, the guy last night, well, I can't remember his name, but... This is what he told us. You, you, oh, definitely, yeah. you definitely don't remember his name. I can't even remember him. <laughs> can't, even remember the, can't even remember the conversation. <laughs> but uh, he was a lovely guy, and he said he's going to go for this race. He's working terrifically well. He's unbeaten. He's beaten Champ. He's beaten the mighty Western Rider as well. So um, I think Vindication, he's 20 to 1 here. I think he'll go off a lot shorter. I wouldn't be surprised to see him place. We'll would be a little bit worried about Black Ops jumping but Sam Crow is a star. What I love is that we're not just getting a whole raft of short price favourites chucked to you, we're getting genuine value alternatives as well in the horses like Vindication and Black Op. We all know that Sam Crow is a good horse, but is he that good? Is he a, a, a four to six shot? Is he gonna win by a mile? Um, just, a, just a quick shout out in the audience. Who's inclined to go with Sam Crow? Yeah. And who's inclined to field against Sam Crow? I think the eyes have it, don't they, David? Yeah, do you know the ones at the bar were against that? They're the drunk ones. <laughs> <laughs> tell you what, I'll tell you what, you're a, lot, you're a lot more polite than last night's audience. That's what I will say. You've got plenty of time to start shouting abuse at us. It, wait till after the interval. Right. Let's move on and have a word about the, uh, the big staying chase for novices, the RSA chase. And again, it's a bit of a question of guess which horses are going to run. We think, well, we know Presenting Percy's going to run here. We know Black Corton's going to run. Beyond that, is Mona Lee going to run here or the JLT? Is Yanworth going to run here or the Stayers Hurdle or the JLT? It's not cut and dry. Shh. But let's get the, uh, the panel's opinion on who might win. Now, Paul, you're a big fan of Mona Lee, but you don't think he's going to run. If I own if I own Monolee, Willoughby Court has just come out of the JLT. He have to go there. 
It'd be absolutely crazy. I mean, look, he's got a chance in both races. But I guarantee you, if he runs in the JLT, it'll be under two to one. And, um, and I'm absolutely certain that, you yeah, know, that's the way I'd go. If they run in here, they're running against some really decent horses. The JLT is, is a race, once you get to look at the runners, it is going to fall apart. And uh, it'll be a short price favourite for that. He's a very good horse. I've loved presenting Percy um, ever, since I saw, ever since I saw him win the Potemps last year. And he does look a top-class chaser. He might be Gold Cup class. I don't like the fact that he ran over two and a half mile on heavy ground last time. I just don't think that was the right idea. He could have run in a novice chase instead. But he ran in a race and had a really, really hard race. And the more I look at it, the more I come down to Black Corton. If he had... If he had started his chase career in November, he'd be half the price he is now. But because they didn't, didn't realise he was that good, he was started in the summer, and everyone thinks, oh, it's just, this, this, this is just a summer jumper punching above his weight. But every time he runs, he, he, every time he runs, he gets better and better and better. And he wins easily. It's not like he's get, taking a load out of it. Bryony Frost is better than 80% of, of all jockeys riding around. I mean, she's brilliant. Um, I just don't that's see... A big, that's a big call, Kiss. I mean, I'm a massive fan of Bryony Frost, but oh, God, yeah. better than 80% of the jockeys she riding is, in the race? She is fantastic. Better than 80% of the jockeys riding. She's fantastic. She's brilliant. You know, if, you know, if there was ever going to be a woman champion jockey, it would be her. I don't think it'll ever happen, but I think she's super. David Jennings, what do you think? Black Corton too big at double figures? <clears throat> no, don't like Black Corton. I think I think he I think he get found out. Look, he's he's improving at a rapid rate, but that was a Mickey Mouse Reynolds head, I thought. I thought got its own way in front. She got and as Paul said, she's a terrific rider. She 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 gave that horse a terrific ride, got a breeder into him at the right times, and like beating those horses, you know. No, not for me, uh, Black Horton. I think, I think presenting Percy ability-wise is the best horse in the race. Um, presenting Percy has so much natural ability, but it's just been bizarrely campaigned by Pat Kelly. Like, there is always method to Pat Kelly's madness. He, he is a shrewd, brilliant trainer. But how he ran this horse in the Red Mills chase, and 24 hours later, there was a grade two novice chase at Navin over three miles that he would have been one to two to win and wouldn't have come off the bridle. And instead he's running against a horse who is third favor for the Gold Cup. It is utterly bizarre. He had a hard- Hang on a minute, David, hang on a minute. We spent the whole season, all of us in the media, berating these trainers for not running their horses in competitive races, not taking on the good horses. We criticised Nicky for not running Boobadere and I. We criticised Sir Tom not. Yeah, but even so, he's actually been bold and he's gone in a proper race and campaigned him against a good horse. And, uh, and now we're saying, oh, he might have left his Cheltenham behind. We can't have it both ways. That's all I'm saying. No, no you can't. And, and I would say for the, for the open horse, the horses that are out of novice company, have a go. Definitely have a go. But I just thought it was the perfect race at Navin. Why... Why put the horse through that on really heavy ground at Gorham Park against a proper Gold Cup contender? I just wonder in the back of their minds after that race, they're thinking to themselves, oh God, what are we after doing? I hope not, because I think he's the most likely winner of the race. I think he's a cracking horse. I think he'll win a Gold Cup someday. As, as regards value, I think there's, there's only one horse in this race that I think is genuine value, and that's Bally Optic, who came back to form at Weatherby last time. Uh, I think he is... <laughs> I love the fact that when, when David tries to come up with something out of the box, the, there's just a sort of swell of noise at the back of the room. Go on, make the case, make the case for Ballyoptic. I'm hoping it's the Irish accent, Nick, that they're not taking to. But I, I think Ballyoptic, he beat, he beat Elegant Escape and Barney Duan at Exeter early in the season. I think that is possibly the best piece of English form on offer. He was brilliant that day. He lost his way in the Feltham, or the Caudal Stars is now called. And I thought last time at Weatherby, he was value for more than the winning margin. It was a funny race. A horse swooped by at the third last. He looked like getting beaten, and then he stayed on again. He's that real battle-hardened type. He was a stayer. He was a top stayer over hurdles. And I think he's in the black line type of mould. Um, I, look, he's not a superstar. We know he's not a superstar. I'm not saying he's definitely going to win, but he doesn't deserve to be 20 to 1. And I could certainly see him running a really big race. Apologies. Um, somebody asked me what I thought, so I will tell you. If there are forgotten horses in the race, or well, forgotten horses, if Album Photo runs here, I think this is a talented horse. I really do. Uh, the other horse that I think is interesting is Mia's Storm. She, again, she might not run here. She's got an entry in the Ultima Handicap Chase, and I think she'd be interesting wherever she runs. You've got to remember, she was favourite. 
She was quite a short price favourite to beat Blackhorn, Elegant Escape and Fountain's Windfall in the Feltham and she tipped over when she was still going well. I, I think she's an interesting horse at double figure price uh, and if she runs here with the sex allowance, I would be backing her. Um, on, to the, on to the Queen Mother Champion Chase. Now listen here, if Altior, Min and Duvan all run in this race, this could be one of the great races. Uh, but could Altior just be a little bit greater than all the others, Paul? Yeah, we, we, we're not going to know about Duvan being 100% until he runs, are we? That's the problem. Um, if it's 100%, 100%, I'm... If it was 100%, 100%, I'm, I'm an Altior man myself. I think he's, he'll end up going as close to the Splinter Sacker as you can get. Like, you know, he, he still needs to improve a hell, of, a hell of a lot to be that good, but he was a better hurdler, and he could just, he could just be an absolute superstar. Now, there's, there's one worry. I, know, I don't know, you know, some of you follow on Twitter and you follow the Time Form guys. One of the Time Form guys came up with this remarkable stat about chasers um, having reappeared from a from a lengthy absence, top class chasers haven't reappeared from lengthy absence. It's something like 106 had come on, come back from a break of you know 275 days or more and won first time out in the last 10 years. Only one has won second time out, which is a, is a remarkable stat. Now most of those will have had um, leg problems rather than wind problems, so it might not be such a worry for, Al for such a worry for Altior who's had a minor wind problem. But it is, you know, he's quite interesting. Min obviously would have been the second one to win, but he was still miles below form on his second start back from a break. So just worry about that. And of course, if you talk about hurdles, Foheen came out, absolutely blew him away first time, and then got chin. So you have to have, you have to worry about that. They call it the bounce pack, so most people just think it's a load of bollocks, but I think there's, there, there's more in it than that. But Overall, Altior, I think, is by far the best horse in the race, even if Duvan's at his best. Right, I, there was something really interesting that Rich Ritchie said last night, and if he was here, I'm sure he'd repeat it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to repeat it for him. Here we go. So I said to him, if Duvan gets to the Cheltenham Festival and Min is in one piece, will you definitely run them in the same race? He said, they're both two milers. As things stand, if Duvan makes it there, we are intending to run both of them in this race. Now, correct me if I get a misrepresenting. I also said, surely then Ruby Walsh would ride Min as he is the shorter priced of the two. And he said, if Duvan turns up in the Queen Mother Champion chase and Ruby Walsh opts to ride Min, I will be turning to my trainer and asking him why we're bothering to run Duvan. Bullshit! Which tells you quite clearly that the, the perception is that Duvan, if he is at Cheltenham and they think he's in good form, is considered still to be by far the superior horse of the two. I'm just passing on the information that we got last night, David Jennings. If that was word for word exactly what he said. He said when the declarations come out at whatever five to ten, when they need to put a jockey on the horse, if Willie tells them that Ruby is riding Min, then Duvan will not be running the race. That's basically, that was basically what he said. And uh, it's funny because with Duvan, I think his work has, I think they've been shocked at how, how swift the recovery has been. And Willie talks about Duvan like he's not talked about any other horse. This is the best horse he's ever trained. And if Duvan does come back to the heights that we hope he does, it will be obviously the, the most fascinating race of the festival, but it's a huge but like, and this will be Willie Mullins' greatest training achievement if he can get Duvan back to win the Queen Mother Champion Chase. He said it was, his odds of running in the race were considerably better than 50-50 when I was there on Monday. I'd say it's more 75-25 that he's gonna get there. His work has been good, he looks great. He looks so fit. It's a long time since I've seen Duvan look so fit. You can see him like he's ribbed. He, he looks terrific, and uh, I think he will run in the race. He'll obviously go off a good, a considerably shorter than 5-1. to one. By God, he's going to have to be pretty good to beat Altior. I think Altior is very, very special. I think right. Altior... Here's the question. Shh. Here's the question, David. Is, is the best of Altior better than the best of Duva? Yes. I, I personally think it is, but the only thing I will say... Willie Mullen says this is the best horse he's ever trained. And he has trained some astonishingly good horses. Vaulture, Hurricane Fly. There's no, there's no quotes from Nicky Henderson basically saying that Altior is the best he's ever trained. So it's a funny type of comparison. Like, 
Uh, I, I think Altior is a better horse than, than Duvan. Duvan at 5 to 1. Altior at well, it's pri price-based play. You've been asked the question, Paul. Yeah, yeah. Hey, man, it's a choice, ain't it? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't bet odds on. I don't, the two shortest price um, bets I ever had at Cheltenham both lost. And, yeah, oh, they both of them were a year ago. Casbar Blitz in a Stayers Hurdle. Yeah. Ran into oh, fucking oh, big oh. bucks. Thierry <laughs> Dumas. Yeah, and, um, and size in Europe when he got beat by Finian's Rainbow. And I thought, that's it, I'm never, ever doing that again. There you go. Well, yeah, you know, if you like being a long odds on, then, you know, there's got to be easier meetings to do so at. You know what I mean? This is hard racing. I'll pass on a bit of information for you. You may or may not find it useful. Last year's article, two out, the horse that was leading Altior, probably would have finished second, Charbel. Now, he ran okay in the Tingle Creek, just okay, but way below his best. Now, subsequent to that, I, th I believe, there was a little bit of a, a structural problem found somewhere in his back, and that's been corrected. Now, if he comes back to last year's Arkle form, he'll run a place in this tomorrow. race. He, he runs, runs tomorrow. tomorrow. He's, in, he's, in, he's in the jumpers bumper of Soul of the Heart. Well, um, they, I think it's literally a four-runner race, and he's £20 pound better than one of them, and, a hundred, pound, and a hundred pound better than the other two. Well, so, you know, so he's going he's to have a jog round and win. I don't think, it, I don't think it's crazy. You might want to, you might want to, because the point is, even if he wins a four-runner jumpers bump around Subble tomorrow, somebody will cut him. The firms will cut him. Betbright. Not Betbright, obviously, but the other firms will cut him. Shit, they'll pay them. They'll be an off. Um, right, that's the Queen Mother Champion chase. We are going to take a, a short-ish break. I tell you what, say we're back here at half eight how does that suit and I, that should give everyone time to get a free drink or two three, 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 right. two hours come back in two hours <laughs> <laughs> for the moment please thank david jennings and paul keely we'll see you back here in 20 minutes thank you very much
Ladies and gentlemen, can, can, can we take our seats again? The second half is about to start. Um, just before we do start, I have located Jonathan, who's missing his credit card. Um, but I now need to reunite Jonathan with his credit card. So, uh, so, so I, I'm hoping it hasn't been used to pay the bar bill, but um, you'll know about it, Jonathan, if it has. But uh, um, if, if Jonathan is right here by the stage, so whoever's got the card, whoever it was that told me, well, you can come and uh, give it back to our lovely man here. I'd be, uh, I'd be very grateful. Right, 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 right. Are we ready? Uh, I welcome back to the stage, ladies and gents, the deputy editor of the Racing Post in Ireland, the shy, retiring, doesn't talk an awful lot, but we're getting there, David Jennings. And, and the man who is compiling some kind of list here, which I think is all his fancies in handicaps. And I promise you, we need to start reading them out now. He is, of course, the betting editor from the Racing Post, Paul Keeley. I think it must be feeding. I think it must be feeding time. Right. We move on to Thursday. Um, I keep saying ladies and gents, but I see precious few ladies, sadly. JLT Novices Chase, the, fir the first race we're going to have a look at. Now, Paul, you've already, you've already shown your hand here. You have already shown your hand effectively in this race, because it's a big if, isn't it? It's if Mona Lee. Yeah, you can, you can still back him non no bet at a, a fair price. A lot, a lot bigger than he's going to be on the day if he runs in the race. I, I think they'd be absolutely bonkers not to run him in it, to be honest, because it, it'll be by far the easiest race to win out of the novice chases. He's a very, very good horse. He jumps like a stag, and I think he'd just jump him silly from the front. If he doesn't run, the race is going to fall apart. And um, Dave was talking uh, earlier on about a horse with the most talent in a race, um, in brain power and the article. Just a, just a naturally talented horse. The most talented horse in this race otherwise is Finian's Oscar. Now, we've seen... We have seen. Uh, we all know the horse has wrists attached. Uh, you know, I'm not. You know, you, you know, I'm not telling you anything new. The horse has wrists attached. You know, but in terms of pure talent, he is the best horse. He's very, very talented. He won a Toll of Hurdle last year, doing handstands. He, listen, right? And somebody just shouted out, he's a hurdler. Fair enough. There are loads of horses over the years that took their time to get their acts together over fences. Um, you, you, can, you can name, like, Menorah took ages to go. A couple of others. If, if, anyone, if any of you remember Munker Hosting, right? He was second in the King George. He won a bit 365 Gold Cup. You know, he won countless other decent races. It took him six chases before he won a race. What's up, boys, was the clumsiest jump you've ever seen the first two starts over chases. He ended up winning a Hennessy and running second in the Grand National. These horses get there as long as, as long as they don't jump frightened and they get over them. Like, you know, and, and Finian's Oscar, when he ran over fences last time at Asker, he was really sticky for the first few because he was remembering Sandown. But in the second half of the race, he jumped quite well. I'm not going to say he jumped brilliantly because he didn't. Like, you know, but he jumped quite well. He didn't, he didn't make any, any serious mistakes. And he still put his head down and he only just got beat giving seven pounds to Benatar, who was a very, very good horse. It is, a, it is a really decent piece of form. If he comes back, I mean, I would not have run him in the Cleve Hurdle on every ground over three miles. Like, you know, I thought that was a bit daft, but I, I almost thought it was like the trainer bowing to public pressure. People keep saying, this horse needs to go back over hurdles. Um, but I think he'll go here. And the way the race is working up, he's a double figure price now. He won't be on the day when the race falls apart as you know it's going to, given a look at the entries. There you are. I think that is a very compelling case for Paul Finian's Oscar. David, David Jennings. Yeah, like uh, as Paul says, he probably does have the most ability in the race. 
About two weeks ago, this was one of the races where I looked through and I said, this is the type of race that could absolutely fall apart because in the top 10 in the betting, he had six horses that were unlikely to run. And as Paul knows, from an anti-post point of view, that's huge. Tom Siegel in the race and post will be the same. Pick out races that you think you might have an angle in. And that's where the JLT is because so many of these are not going to run. Willoughby Court is gone. Footpad is going to run the Arkell. Uh, we don't know that Album Photo is going to go here. Uh, Sutton Place has just been a shambles. Mon Lee will probably run the RSA. Petty Mouchoir goes in the Arkell. So what you're down to, and I think the most likely winner of the race, and it might get a few boos once again, I think Modus is the most likely winner of the race. Yeah. I'm not sure, David, whether those were boos or cheers of approval from Modus. Yes, cheers of approval. They love you now, Jennings. They love you. You've won them over. So, ho ho hopefully I will be able to win you over. Uh, with, with Modus, you have to remember, this horse is rated 156. He, his last three runs at Cheltenham, he was fifth in the Coral Cup off 156 to Super Sunday. He was second in the Great Wood, and he was second in the Champion Bumper. He does like Cheltenham. He's got loads of ability. He's such a slick and accurate jumper. He fell, he fell at Exeter, but Exeter was not part of the plan. This horse is a proper grade one chaser who I almost think that the race has almost fallen into its lap. Everything has come together nicely. Everything has added up. And I think Modus, you read Paul Nichols' stable tours and he's talking him down. He's saying, oh, I'm not sure, I'm not this. He's owned by J.P. McManus, so that could be a positive. I think this horse is a proper horse. I think he could even go off favourite. Mo there you are. There you are. If you don't like it, don't back him. If you like it, get him back. Modus, big price. And Finian's Oscar, big price for the JLT Novices Chase. You'll remember those. The Ryanair Chase we're going to have a look at next. Under so looking for back-to-back -back wins in the race. Right. Who was the last horse, the only horse to win this race back-to-back? -back? Well, look that man there. Give him another free beer and top him up with pizza. Um, under so, three to one. I think he's probably not quite that big price at the moment. Uh, waiting patiently might not run. Fox Norton is out, unfortunately. Min won't run here. Duvan won't run here. Top Notch Willie's a solid little horse. York Hill won't run here. I tell you who will run here, David Jennings. Balco de Flo. Now, me and Paul are going to disagree with plenty tonight, but this is one thing, not to give away your tip, Paul, that we are absolutely 100% in agreement. Balco de Flo is a horse you've simply got to back now for the, for the Ryanair because he's going to go off so much shorter. If you see on these booklets, what is he here? He's 10 to 1. He, he, he's not going to be 10 to 1. This horse is going to go off so much shorter. Uh, the couple of reasons why I think Balco de Flo can win the Ryanair. So Lieutenant was second to under so in this race last year. He was beaten a length and three quarters, I think, was the official winning distance. He was rated 161. Balco de Flo is a far better horse. The ratings say he's three pound better. I think he's far better than sub-lieutenant. He won a Galway plate. He was very impressive. I know he only won it off 146, but he was very, very impressive there. He was disappointing next time, but he came back against Road to Respect in the Leperstown Chase at Christmas, and he ran an absolute cracker. It was a really good run from an improving horse who wants better ground, who might well have had a big say in the JLT last year had he not come down. He was back from a huge price into about 14 to 1 that day. They think the world of this horse. I spoke to Eddie O'Leary about this horse about two weeks ago, and I said, Eddie, I'm after backing one of your horses today. Am I mad? I said, I back Balco to flow for the Ryanair at 16 to 1. He said, no, you're not mad at all. He said, I was embarrassed when I seen the betting for the Leperstown Chase to see that this horse was 60, 66 to 1. He said that was an embarrassment to the horse. They think he's a far better horse than that. They've never won the race. They'll never should, get a better I think chance. he should have stopped being embarrassed and just got it back, to yeah. be honest. Like, yeah. 66 to 1. Because, but, this is their best chance of winning the race. And this is another one. You see that double figure price, like Paul had said, there's absolutely no chance this will go off 10 to 1. There we are. He's pretty much said it all kills, but if the, do you want to put the cherry on the cake? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, listen, I, I, I love the horse. If you, you have to remember, he ran in the uh, JLT last year. He was 40 to 1 in the morning, and he was quietly backed. He went down to 16 to 1 at the off, and he was tanking along in front, jumping really well, and then he just crashed through the fourth last and come down. Now, I don't know where he would have finished in the end. It was too far out, but I tell you what, he cannot have been that far off top notch. He was only a length down on, uh, on York Hill. He'd have been there or thereabouts, so he obviously handles the track really well. 
He, he's a very good horse. Two times after that, he ran on soft ground, which he doesn't like. Got better ground in that race at uh, behind vote of respect. He's a good horse. Underso, we all know Underso is a fantastic horse. He's won 20 out of 26. Now, I, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes you get on the wrong side of a horse, and no matter what they do, you always stay on the wrong side of it, don't you? you know what I mean? It's a shame if they've won 20 races and you've been on the and wrong side every time, isn't it? I've, I've always been like that with Underso. I've always tried to get him beat, and he comes, comes out and he wins, and he's brilliant. The last year's race was the worst Ryanair run for a long while. The horses that finished behind him are one from 22 since, right? And, th and that win was last season. None of them have even looked like winning a race this season. And under Stowe, still, still five lengths clear at the last, was tying up. It's at the very end of his stamina range. And I think Balco de Flo is better than the horses that ran in it last year. And obviously Q Card is as well. The one thing about Underso is he doesn't have that big figure from a, from a handicap rating point of view that makes him a great. In fact, Q Card has eight better runs to his name than, uh, than Underso ever has. I can't have a 12 year old winning a great one at Cheltenham though. I think the last one was 1973. I would love to do it. I will back him because you know, it's, a bit, it's a bit like when you, when, you watch a, when you see a film come on TV that you love and you just have to watch it because it's on. When Q God runs, I have to back him. But uh, I don't think he'll win. And I think Balco de Flo is, is, he has to be the bet. He cannot be out of the frame as long as he gets round. Yeah, I suppose to use your analogy earlier, David, if cue card is your girl at university, she's still looking pretty good. Yeah, she bloody is. She's still a model. Uh, I, cue card, that run the last day, it, I never really, like, grow an affection for a horse. Like, I don't get the whole, the new one fascination. I think the new one is a lovely horse that runs loads of really nice races, but he's, he's not a superstar, and there's just growing love for the new one. Q card is a different type of horse. By God, he's been through the mill. He wears his heart in his sleeve. At the very top level, he does. And he came back against Waiting Patiently in the Ascot Chase. And my heart went out to him. Even when Waiting Patiently cut him off on the run-in, he still had the balls to try and come back on the outside. He's a bloody good horse. And it would give me no... No, I won't say that because I, I will have backed Balco de Flo. But if Balco de Flo doesn't win, it will give me no greater pleasure at Cheltenham that the C Q card with the Rainer. Well, hang on a minute. If if Q card just gets the better of Balco de Flo in a very sick. very tight finish, absolutely. He, sick. You'll be calling him in Q Hardly card. You'll bite it in the retirement. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, very good point made by a gentleman there. What about waiting patiently? Will he run, Keels? Will he run? Will he run? Yeah, the whole thing is they're not certain to run. If it's very soft ground, he might run. But even if it is. They're still talking about not going. It wasn't the be-all and end-all. Apparently, Malcolm Jefferson was never that keen on running it. If it is soft ground, he'll win. I think he's the best horse. I don't, I, don't, I don't think there's any doubt about that whatsoever. If it is soft ground, he'll win. He'll go off favour. He absolutely cruised past Q-Card, who was, you know, OK, he probably wasn't the horse he was two years ago, but he's still a very, very good horse. He's the best horse in the race. He's a potential superstar, but I just don't think he's going to run. So I'm looking at the race as though he isn't. So Valka de Flo and possibly a little bit of cue card on the side if you fancy it. Uh, we'll move on to the stayers hurdle here, ladies and gents. Now this is a... Now gentlemen in the front row here says this is about the worst race of the meeting, but... Oh, it's the most competitive race. It is a very competitive race. Okay, it's all about opinions. It'll be a brilliant race if you back the winner though, won't it? It'll be... <laughs> Right, Keels, take, take the stayers hurdle apart. Right, uh, you're right, it's not the great it's not the greatest stayers hurdle ever run, but then you know, unless you unless you've got a superstar, you know, horses that run three miles over hurdles, you know, they're horses that can't jump fences, aren't they, generally? Like, you know what I mean? It's it's, it's you know yeah, but yeah, you've 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 had a few in recent years, but most years you haven't. We're going back to we're going back to the old way now. I don't think Super Sunday will stay. I think he got outstayed by Apple's Jade at Leopardstown. He got outstayed by Yamworth at Aintree. I'm not 100% convinced that Yamworth's a proper stayer either. Like, you know, so, so, so I'm, I'm ruling those out. I back the mare, La Bagora. I think she's very, very good. She's a bit of a winning machine. I've slightly started to go off her lately. I'm, I'm just a little bit worried that she doesn't like Cheltenham. Um, she probably should have run better even at two mile last year. I, you know, I'm still back to her. I'm, I'm, I'm sticking with the bear. But there's a couple of interesting things coming from other preview nights um, that you might be interested in. First of all, 
Harry Fry's, um, you know what I mean, Harry, is another one of those that has been to Martins, Martinstown for a full service and MOT and, and come back and, you know, he's apparently pleasing him. You know, and last year he went off odds on and there isn't a horse as good as Nichols Canyon in the race this year and he's a double figure price. If the ground's on the easy side, you can easily see him going well. And the other one who was quite interested, there's big rumours going around that uh, a certain owner of one of the horses, Tony Bloom, has been trying to buy a box for the Thursday for Penn Hill, who hasn't run since he won the Albert Bartlett. And... No, 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 he's, he's, no he's, he's, he's going. Apparently it's always been the plan to go first time, but it's always been the plan to go first time out. And I went and watched the Albert Bartlett last year, and he won really easily from a horse that will be first or second favourite for whatever chase he's going to run in at the festival. So it's interesting. He's 10 to 1. He's one of those. You, you, you know the story with Tony Bloom. When they lay one out for a gamble, they get smashed up. We saw Withhold go off at a ridiculously short price for the success, but it wasn't ridiculously short, was it? Because he was never, ever going to win after, never, ever going to lose after like two furlongs of the race. This horse is 10 to 1. He could end up going off favour. Are we just missing the obvious here? Sa exactly, Sam Spinner. We're, we're just missing the obvious. This is the, this is the coming emerging force this season. He bolted up in the long walk hurdle at Asker. He beat a really talented horse in Lamy Surge. I heard somebody mention the World's End. I think the World's End's a terrific horse. I think he could run really well, but he put him in his place as well. Uh, what's, what's wrong with Sam Spinner? He's still a four to one shot. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm petrified. I'm petrified of the reaction here because <laughs> I, I really don't want to say it. I really don't. Say it, say it, Jennings. Go on. Super I fancy Lammy Surge. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I get it. David, David Jennings has got a whole kennel. He's got a whole kennel's worth going into Cheltenham. Yeah, before I begin, all I can do is apologise in advance. Um, uh, how anybody can tell me, how any odds compiler, how any punter, how any form student can tell me how Lamy Surge in this booklet and in general is, is three times the price of Sam Spinner is beyond me. In the Ascot race, it's right-handed, which Lamy Surge absolutely detests. If you think that Get a Bird needs to go one way or over the other, you've seen it with your own eyes how blatant it is that Lamy Surge needs to go left-handed. He's now a grade one winner over a trip beyond three miles, who needs to go left-handed, who needs better ground, who's got crack in Cheltenham form. He was beaten that by Arctic Fire in a county hurdle. He's run, he was third in a JLT, he loves Cheltenham, he comes alive in the spring, and there is absolutely no way he should be a 12 to one shot. I think there is no way he can finish out in the first three. Daryl Jacob is the only man that can ride this horse. The ride he gave this horse when beaten by Sam Spinner was possibly one of the greatest rides I've ever seen. That's going to sound ridiculous because he was beaten. It was a brilliant ride in the feet. And I think Lamy Surge will be primed for this race. I think he's got a cracking chance. Just a couple of other notes on Penn Hill. The plan for Penn Hill has always been to come to this race first up. He's back working well. He's back working well. He, looked, he looks well. He's a talented horse. And he is the... The typical plunge horse. You wouldn't be one bit surprised if you've seen a huge Tony Bloom gamble on Penn Hill. And he probably will go off shorter. Super Sunday. I was interviewing Jessica Harrington. There's an interview in the Racing Post on Monday. And she does this impression of Super Sunday. What he was like last season compared to this season. I'll try and do it, but it's not very good. So she said when he came to the yard from Henry, Henry de Bromheads, he had his head down and his paws or his hooves were like this. And he just sulked. He, she, she's far better at doing the impression than me, by the way. Uh, he just soaked around the place. Now, he said since he won the, the Coral Cup and since he's won the Grade 1 at, uh, at Leperstown, he's just turned inside out. He thinks he's the man in Moon, so he does. He just thinks he is the bomb. I'm not convinced that he'll stay. Like Paul, he had every chance to beat Yanworth at Aintree last year. He was upsides at the last. I'm not convinced he's a, a thorough stayer. I think we get sucked into these horses that don't travel on the bridle. Just because they find plenty on the bridle doesn't mean they need further, like the new one, which Paul will probably talk about. But look, Lamy Surge is one of my many, many guilty pleasures, and I'm hoping that is a, it is a guilty pleasure fest at Cheltenham for me. Let's just uh, remind ourselves of some of those guilty pleasures. Brain power, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Lamy Surge. <laughs> Modus. Modus. <laughs> 
Heritage Bowls. Heritage Bowls are certainty. We're going to move on and have a word about the Triumph Hurdle. Listen, listen, you're getting restless. It'll be your turn in a minute. Let these guys tell you what's going to win the races on the last day. Triumph Hurdle to kick off with. What's wrong with Apple Shakira, if anything, David? Yeah, I don't think there's anything. The only problem, nothing wrong with her. She's a she. That's the only thing. But uh, she's a... Uh, I think, I think she's a lovely juvenile and I think she's got the perfect profile of the race. This time last year we were all sitting on preview nights in Ireland and England, up and down the country, saying why Deffy Desai couldn't win the Triumph Hurdle. I know you've got to rewind 12 months, but it's the same with Apple Shakira. She's been there, she's done it. I thought both Apple Shakira and Look My Way got bad rides in the trials day of Triumph. Look My Way went too quick with Tom Scoot, tried to snatch the race. Barry gave Apple Shakira too much to do, had to work so hard to get to the front. She still won by eight lengths. She's a bloody good horse, and she's probably, she's probably one of the favourites that you're trying to get, but you have no real reasons for trying to get her. I think she'll run a cracking race, and the horse that she beat, look my way, he's a good horse, and he's 33 to one. I wouldn't be surprised if he snuck a place. Yeah, he's in the Fred Winter as well, but he's, he's a horse I back whichever race he runs in. Paul Keeley. English horses or Irish horses? English horses, Irish uh, horses. Big Irish fan. I, I, I'm complete opposite with, with Dave when it comes to Apple Shakira. I think she's been the wrong price. That, that's the only thing. She could definitely win. I mean, you'd be stupid to think otherwise. But she got she got cut so short for winning a race in which, in which the second favour was a horse trained by Philip Hobbs, who's been out of form all season. She won it so easily. Suddenly she's a really short price. She won her next race at, at no odds at all, beat rubbish. And then she big looked my way, but she looked she looked briefly in trouble. As Dave said, she might have got a bad race. But she's also she's a she's a sister obviously to Apple's Jade. Apple's Jade is a better horse on soft ground than she is on good ground. She got beat in the triumph. Shush! She got beat in the triumph two years ago. She got outspeeded by Ivanovic Gorbatov, and every run she's had since tells you that Ivanovic Gorbatov uh, that she's a better horse than that one. Now she's by Sadler Maker. Sadler Maker, same size as Bristol De Meyer. 80% strike rate at Haydock, Sadler, Sadler Maker has. These, these horses, they want soft ground. And I think if you get the normal good ground festival, she will get outspeeded. And she'll get outspeeded by one of the Irish horses. Now, Mr. Adjudicator beat Farclass at Leopardstown, but I'm absolutely convinced that Farclass will turn that form around. The favourite in that race, Espoir Dallin, dropped in a hole, and Farclass was only having his second run over hurdles. He didn't know what to do when he hit the front. But he still found he still found plenty. He got chin. He he needs a strong test at two miles. He's by jukebox jewelry. Um, Mr. Adjudicator's by a sprinter. He'll appreciate the stamina test far more. He'll be produced much later, and I'm I'm absolutely convinced Far Class will win. I think I think shh, I think what I just heard from the back of the room, though I couldn't be absolutely sure. It sounded a bit like Stormy Island. So Jennings, you can go a yay or a nay on Stormy Island. It's 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 neither. I was in Fairy House. I was in Fairy yesterday. She won. It was an incredible performance. The time was incredible. The distance she won by was incredible. It was a terrible race, but very fragile. Um, has been kept for the race. Uh, I don't think they know. I don't think they know how good it is. That's the problem. I, I don't think they know. And it's one of these horses. I think it'll either win or be pulled up. You know that kind of way. It'll try and go way off out in front. And if if it if it's bang right on the day, it has a massive chance. But I just don't think you can trust it on the back of that uh, fairy. I'd like I'd like more evidence. Is what I'm su suggesting. All right. All right. Right. Can every can everyone still hear at the back? Yes. Yes. Good. Okay, somebody is, is... Shut the fuck up then. Is, is there a... Is, is there a small terrier barking in the room? Or... Yeah, I thought so. Or is somebody hiccuping loudly? Right. Let's move on, and we'll talk about the uh, Albert Bartlett Novices Hurdle. Now, last night... Last night... Shh. Because you're going to learn something now. You are? I promise you. Promise you you're going to learn something. Paul Keeley gave us an education on the Albert Bartlett, and he is going to school you lot now. Paul Keeley, listen up. Oh, yeah. this, this, this is good. This, is good. this race is brutal. 
right? It's really, really hard work for horses that are young and they, you know, if you're a novice, if you're a novice hurdler and you need three miles in your first season, right, what you are is a big backward future chaser, right? And time and time again, we see these horses, they've had two or three runs, they turn up, short prices at Cheltenham, and they come nowhere. I'll just give you a few, I'll just give you a few stats about the novice hurdles. In the, in the supreme novice hurdle in the last 10 years, there have been 12 non-finishers. In the Ballymore, there have been 14 non-finishers. In the Albert Bartlett, there have been 62. Right? That is because these horses, they jog, they jog around in, in boggy fields, in small fields, of, you know, in over two and a half miles, some of them run three miles, and they go around really, really slowly, and then they turn up at Cheltenham, and they run in a 20, 24 runner race, and they go hard and fast for three miles on good ground. They haven't got the faintest idea what, what hits them. What you need in this race is a horse that has loads and loads of racing experience. I think, I think if you'd only backed the horse that had run the most times, you'd have backed four winners of the race at 33, 16s, 14s, and 11s. Right? They, you know, it's not about the best horse. This race has produced eight, eight Cheltenham Festival chase winners, a Gold Cup winner, it's produced a couple of um, Hennessy winners, Irish Gold Cup winners, but the vast majority of them get beat in this race. Obviously there are exceptions, Bobsworth would be an obvious one. So what you want is a horse with loads and loads of experience. Penn Hill had been running on the flat. He, he was having his 27th start when he ran. Like, the year before, you know what I mean, Harry was having his 17th start. There's a horse in this race, still trading on offer at 33 to 1, called Callit Mad. Right? He, ran over he ran over fences last year. Right? Go and have a look. Go and watch the uh, National Hunt Chase from last year. This horse was still a month short of his fifth birthday. Right? And he was cantering throughout the race, still within two lengths of the lead, jumping the third last. Didn't stay. Right. Since then, he's come back over hurdles this year. One other horse has done that. Nenyufar Kolodz in 2008 was a chaser who came back over hurdles. He's gone the same route. Um, he, had a, he had a wind issue, and so he had a wind up. Didn't run well the first time. Second time out, they put him in, in a Potemps uh, qualifier at Musselburgh, and he hunted round the back, and he absolutely pissed up. Right. This horse, I, don't, you know, I can't promise you he'll win, but he's 25, 33 to 1 he will still be there at the last. And a lot of the horses that everybody else fancies with this, you know, the, the profile of not having had a few runs, they will not be there. I think that deserves a round of applause. That is the finest, that is the finest bit of working for a Cheltenham selection you will ever see. Whether or not it for Cheltenham! Whether or not it falls out of the back of the TV is another matter. But you're not gonna, you're not gonna beat that, TJ. You're not gonna beat it. So I don't know why you're gonna try. Follow that. It's a bit like people turning up here tonight expecting to see Rich Richie, Rich Richie, and to see me instead. Uh, it's impossible to follow that. Uh, as pa Paul said, basically, basically everything that needs to be said, Paul has said it. Like if you go back through the. The recent winners are the, the, the winners of this race since it's been the Albert Bart. Yeah, that'll do, that'll do, that'll do. You know, Bertie Stream, Brindisi Breeze, Very Wood, you know what I mean, Harry? They're all basically plodders. And what happens is, as Paul said, these young horses get taken out of their comfort zone, they're not used to it. And so many good horses have got beaten in this race. Like, you look back to Debt Duty last season, Bells Hill and stuff like that. And don't get sucked, please, please, please. No matter if you fancy a horse, like Santini, who could be a superstar, like Next Destination, who could be a superstar, like even Cracking Smart, who could be very good, don't get sucked into the trap that we get sucked into year after year and back in the most promising horse in the race because it doesn't matter. It's simply to go against all your judgment and what, if you think there's a superstar in this race, just try and keep your money and don't back it because superstars don't win this race. And for that reason, I think, as Paul said, I think Callum Mad is the value, but I think, I think Chef de Zobo is the most likely winner of the race because he's a proper stare who knows how to win over three miles. 
he's, he, he, he won over three miles at Haydock on bad ground, and that is the type of profile you need for this race. Santini might be the second coming, but I don't think it matters in the Alba Bartlett. I really do think you need a grinder, and I think Chef de Zobo is the grinder. All righty. Paul Keeley, he likes Calimad, and we know, well, we knew already that David Jennings was a big fan of Grinder, and, uh, and so is Broom. Um, right. <laughs> shush, shush. Oh, stop it. Um, I'm, I'm asking for it now. I'm asking for it. I know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, right. Right, the Gold Cup then, the big one. Is Mike Bite gonna bite? And if he doesn't bite, what's gonna bite and what's got the most bite? Paul Keeley, Mike Bite or not? I tell you what, he'd have won this Gold Cup. Hey. Can I have him an exacto with Harbour Pilot, please? Uh, yeah, I, listen, I went, did loads of these last year, and the one horse everybody wanted to lay for the RSA was Mike Byatt. And obviously, if he hadn't have turned right halfway up the running, he'd have won it very easily. Uh, that is the second time that he's turned right halfway up the running, actually the third time that he's turned right in the straight there. And the chances are he'll do it again. The other thing is, he's been favourite for a long, long while. And... If you, look at that King, if you look at the King George form, if somebody had told you at the beginning of the season that a one-length win from double shuffle would entitle you to Gold Cup favouritism, you'd have called for the men in the white coats, wouldn't you? He's obviously a very good horse, but double shuffle hit ten fences during that race as well. Like, you know, that's him, to be honest. I mean, if he ever actually jumps, puts in a clean round, he'll probably win a very, very good race. But the whole point is, the horse has been favourite for ages. He's got his quirks. He hasn't separated himself away from the field as much as the odds suggest. And, you know, I have to take him on. And if you look at, if you look at the normal profile of a race, it's a second season chaser, might bite his one. With a last time out, grade one win, might bite his one. You know, he's got all that, but then so has Road to Respect. And Road to Respect did win a race at Cheltenham last season. And he did win it by miles, and he didn't turn right turning up the straight, and he stays three miles, and he's a very, very good horse, and on good ground, I, I, I wouldn't want to kick him out of frame. Road to respect, good solid claims, Paul Keeley's Gold Cup selection. Dave, David. Yeah, it's very open. My bite is the right favourite, and we can all try and find chinks in his form, and, and the one chink that everybody is going to say, he's a son of Scor, he's a son of Scorpion, He's going to look for the shoot on the way up the run in and he's going to throw the race away. And that's what we're all basing our argument on. And he might well do that. Maybe he will. But he's the right favourite. He's probably the best horse in the race. And he probably might win. But I think from a, from a punting perspective, you have to try and find something to beat my fight because there's so many alternatives. It's not like, it's not like when Cardo Star was running against Den Man and you throw in an exotic dancer and nothing else can win the race. This is a gold cup where you can make valid cases, and any of you up here could come up and stand here, and whatever you fancy, you can make a valid case, and we could say, do you know what, you're right, that has a chance. There's eight horses in this race that can win it. The one that I will back in the race, and that I have backed, is Our Duke. Uh, I just think Our Duke is that kind of, he's like a mini Denman, in that, he's like a mini Denman, in that he's, he's obviously not as good as Denman, but he's a similar type of horse, and his running style is similar. He's a relentless galloper, that if he gets into a rhythm, he is so dangerous. We saw that in the Irish Grand National last year, which he won by 14 lengths as a novice. He was a top-class novice last season. He won over a really inadequate trip in beating, presenting Percy in the Red Mills chase at Gorham Park. He's blossomed since, he's working well. Noel Feely is a really good jockey, and I could see him taking it up with a circuit to go, just like Demon did, and I think he could take a lot of horses out of their comfort zone. It's a wide open goal cup, but I think Arju, if, if he jumps the first three or four fence as well, I think he's got a cracking chance. Right, one vote for Road to Respect, one vote for Arju. For what it's worth, I think Sizing John can do it again. He won't be running. I won't yeah. worry about him. Uh, Pony Island was my idea of the Gold Cup winner before the catastrophe at Ascot. 
I interviewed Eddie Harty. I'm a jinx. The last two trainers of it, well, Gordon Elliott is the big read on Sunday and Jessica Harrington is Monday, but the two trainers I interviewed before that were Gavin Cromwell ahead of Espoir de Lens run in the, in the Spring Juvenile Hurdle and Eddie Harty ahead of, ahead of uh, Coney Island run at Ascot. So I'm an absolute jinx. But they do think the world of Coney Island. I have no idea what happened. He's a better horse than that. All righty. Right, right. Shush! Shush, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen now. Right. I'm going to ask our panellists for their three best bets out of the championship races that we've just looked at. Then I'm going to ask each of them for a list of their handicappers. Then we're going to take a few questions. So if you're happy to listen, and you should listen because you're going to get a lot of information now in the next five minutes. Uh, this is the most important bit. Then you can shout the house down till your heart's content. David Jennings, take it away. Quick as you like. Okay, my three best in the championship the, races. The three best on both reasons, on, 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 I suppose, form-wise and price-wise. My three best will be uh, Balco de Flow in the Ryanair Chase, who I think will go off much shorter. Modus in the JLT. And the other one I will give is Chef de Zobo. No, I'm petrified to give brain power. Chef de Zobo in the Albert Barton. So Modus, Chef de Zobo, and Balco de Flo is the main one. And uh, what well, do you think about your handicappers? Keels, give us the three in the championship uh, race. Yeah, three Fart, best. Far Clash, Balco de Flo, and Calit Mad. Far Clash in the Triumph Hurdle, Balco de Flo in the Ryanair, and Calit Mad, if he runs in the Albert Barley, he still has the Potemps option, don't forget. Now, handicappers, Keels, this was a work of genius last night. It's a labour of love. There's so many horses on there. Go on, give it, give it, give it to us as fast as you can. Well, I, I, I'll do my best. Right, we're starting on a Tuesday, Ultimate Handicap Chase. This time last year, I was telling everyone they had to back, they had to back Kustar Sibola uh, for the Martin Pipe, and... He was 20 to 1 at the time, and he went, ended up going off joint favourite, I think, and he finished fourth. He was third the previous year in the Fred Winter. He, he's been running, he'd been running in good graded races over two and a half mile. He got stepped up to three mile at Exeter last time. He absolutely pissed up, and I thought he might have ruined it, but the handicapper only put him up seven pounds. He's running off 142. He's by the same sire as, as Rev de Civila. He's totally unexposed at three miles. And I think he's just got to go very close. He's still about 14, 16 to 1. He'll be second favourite on the day. Might even be favourite. Gold Crescent is favourite at the moment. But I can't see him, I can't see him winning off, off as high a market he's got at the moment. In the uh, Close Brothers Novice Handicap Chase, Barney Dwan. Uh, Barney Dwan. Barney Dwan, ladies and gentlemen. The Close Brothers. Barney, Barney there's, a, there's a guy in front of me shaking his head like mad. <laughs> He's a, he's a very, very good horse. He finished second to present in Percy in the, in the, um, in the Potemps final last year. But present, present in Percy might win a Gold Cup. It was a very, very good Potemps. Most of them aren't that good. Right? He's come out, he, he's, he's run his races. He actually got dropped two pounds for winning at Musselburgh last time. Some people are worried about the way he jumps, but when he gets better ground, like a lot of horses, he'll jump better out of it. He's, right, he's running off a mark of 143. He's at least 10 pounds better than that. He has to go well. National Hunt Chase. Yes. National Hunt very, Chase. Very interesting. Everyone thinks there's a million plots in this race, and there probably are. But the horse that interested me most ran in the two and a half mile chase at Sandown last time and got beat 30 lengths. It's called No Comment, trained by Philip Hobbs. It only had been beaten three or four lengths had he not had he not made a horrendous mistake um, in, in the straight. Now he was a very very good herd, a very very good handicap herder at three miles. He wants a trip. He's a good horse, and he's still 20, 25 to run. J.P. McManus, he will have a good jockey on him. And, and that's one of the things you need to... I think to one's already been booked, hasn't yeah. he? Who has it? Who is it O'Connor? Uh, no? I think, it, I think it will be... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 there you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. Apparently, we're, judging by the way Dave went there, we're not supposed to let you know that. I didn't know that either. But he's got a cracking chance. I really want to back no comment now. I really want... Yeah, he will not be a 20 to one shot. Um, we go to the Coral Cup and um, Paul's very interested in the horse trained by uh, Ben Paul in called Le Broy. Last time he ran, last time he ran was in December at Aintree. Le Broy, Le Broy, Le Broy. Last time he ran was in December at Aintree. He was trying to give nearly twenty pound to Black Ivory, who came out and pissed up again. Next time, obviously Ben Paulin's had his struggles with his horses, so he hasn't run him since. But he's still only, he's only, I think he's two pounds higher than he was then. He's got a fantastic handicap mark. 
he has to go close if he runs in that race. I think he's also in the attempts. Um, in the uh, Fred Winter horse, you know, we're talking about we're, we're talking about the Triumph Hurdle earlier on, and we're talking about a Look My Way being a really, really good horse. Well, Paul Nichols' act of valor absolutely destroyed him. First time, first time out over hurdles. He he was not right second time when he ran against We Have a Dream. Third time he was second to We Have a Dream at Musselburgh on soft ground. Doesn't like soft ground. He's nearly a hundred horse on the flat. He's running off 136 in the Fred Winter. He, he, you know, he's just got to go well. He's about 14 to one. He'll be shorter than that. There's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a gentleman at the back shouting banker. At least I think that's what he's shouting. Um, Act of Valor. Act of Valor in the Fred Winter. Act of Valor. We got, and it's not a handicap. We, 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 we're just, we're, we'll just have, a, just have a quick word about the bumper. Right, there's a horse called Black Bow that won a, won a grade two bumper at Navin uh, last time at the, at the Dublin Festival. It, it, ran to a hand, it, it ran to a race of post rating of 142. That is 17 pound higher than was given to Fiona last year for winning, for winning the champion bumper. It's the best bumper run this year. You don't get many that good one before the, before the festival. But the horse I like was the one that finished second to him. It won, it won second time out, made the running, and then last time they dropped him in behind. It's called Rhinestone, trained by Joseph O'Brien, and they gave him too much to do, and he really, really did fly up the straight. He's flatbred, he's guaranteed to appreciate better ground. I think he has to go close. Word is from the Mullins camp that half the Mullins camp think Black Bow is the one, the other half think it's holographic, who is also very, very good. But I'm, I'm in the Rhinestone camp. We move on to the, uh, the Burton, what's it, what's the Burton? The Brown Advisory, Mr. Whitaker, trained by Mick Shannon. Um, around, about, around about 14 to one. That one on trials day at, uh, at Cheltenham in January. And it won, it won really easily on ground it's not supposed to like. Heavy ground. And you know, it'd be second to Hell's Kitchen the time before at Kempton. The, the runner-up, the pair finished miles clear. The runner-up finished third in the um, Racing UK chase at, um, at Kempton on Saturday. It's a really, really good piece of form. He has to go close. And I've got, I've got a left field one for you in the Kim Muir. He's uh, talking about horses with back class. Road to Riches has done bugger all for ages. But he's got a handicap mark of 142. And he's a massive price. Oh, no idea. One third in the Gold Cup. One third in the Gold Cup. My, you know, may have, may have completely gone, but I mean, it's yeah. good ground. Right, there you go, yeah. He, has, he may have completely gone. Um, there's one horse. Jeff, one more. No, 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 I've got, I've got more than one more. Oh, right. <laughs> there's, <clears throat> there's a couple of horses that I have no idea where they're going that are very interesting. Deal Destreval is, is a horse owned by Rich Ritchie. It was second to a horse called Off You Go at, um, uh, at Leopardstown. And, you know, it was second to a Charles Burns horse. A Charles Burns, you know, the handicap king, managed to get it rated 107 when it was really a 157. And uh, it pissed up there, and then it pissed up in the big race at Leopardstown. Dill Destreval ran a really, really good race in that. If it gets in anywhere, you have to back it. Uh, same with D's to BF, trained by uh, Nicky Henderson. Now, he's in the Gold Cup. He's in the Martin Pipe. I'm told they're thinking of going Martin Pipe and putting James Bowen on it. He was, uh, he was a running on fifth in the Lanzarote at Kempton, which has worked out very well. Top of the game, he was, he was third in the race, won a big race at Sandown. He will go close. They're absolutely certain that he wants good ground. Couple more. There's a horse running. There's a horse entered for the county hurdle that has been favourite for the, been favourite at the Cheltenham Festival for the last two years and is currently 20 to 1. Ivanovich Gorbatov. Won the... Ivanovic Gorbatov. always gets a cheer when he. <laughs> Ivanovic Gorbatov won the Triumph Hurdle two years ago, having run shit the time before. He came out. He came out last year. He ran in Triumph Hurdle of a mark of 150. He'd run shit the time before. Owned by J.P. Romanus, went off five to one favourite. Did too much. Did, did and the time before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did too much of the donkey work behind the runaway leader and. You know, he only got B3 lengths. He's two pound lower this time. That the British handicap was put in 148. Last race, Grand Annual, another horse with with Cheltenham form that is very interesting. Don't know where he's going to run. Diego de Charmel. 
I mean, I, you, you just don't know, do you? Like, Ivanovic Gorbachev gets a massive cheer. Diego de Chamil gets booed. They both won Cheltenham Festival races. He has won. He has won a Fred Winter. He's won a Fred Winter. He won. He ran in the county hurdle last year. He went off at 12 to 1 off a mark of 149. He's 20 to 1 plus. He's running off 143 over fences. He jumps really, really well. He won his novice chase. He's running great races after that. Third to Willie B. Gore. And then beaten miles by St. Calvados on bottomless ground that he doesn't like. He's got a chance if he runs. Trainer has put up Dolos as his horse in that race. Same owners. But I think if Diego de Sharma went, runs, he's got a chance. Yeah. Paul Keeley, ladies and gents. That's good. Right. Jennings, you don't have to take that long if you don't want to. There's two very, very, uh, I suppose, there's two very interesting things from Paul Keeley's handicap analysis there. One is we did the exact same thing last night, and by far the biggest cheer of the whole night was when he mentioned Ivanovich Gorbachev which happened again tonight, which is quite bizarre. And the second thing is, he's mentioned about 20 horses there, and none of them are the ones I'm going to mention. So you'll probably run out of ink. Uh, I'll do it as quick as I can, and obviously brevity is not my strong point. I'm going to start off with one that's a very short price, but will get much shorter, and I'm sure this will get a big cheer. The shortest price favourite at the Cheltenham Festival in 2018 will be Lorena. Trained by Willie Mullins, running in the Mayor's Novice Hurdle, and I know this is a very short price, but I'll just tell you, Willie said two things about this horse the other day that he never, ever says. He said she's top-notch and she's special. Top-notch and special are not in Willie Mullins' vocabulary, so I think she'll win. Okay, so rattling through these very quickly. I have already backed... I have already backed jury duty for the, for the National Hunt Chase. I interviewed Gordon Elliott last week. I said, Gordon, will you do one thing for me? All I'm asking is one favour. Will you make sure jury duty runs in the National Hunt Chase as I back the horse? And he said, I don't know if I can do that for you. And I said, why? And he goes, I'd love to see Duna Cost run in the race. I think he's got a cracking chance. And I went back through the form and I said, you know what, he's right. Duna Cost has got a cracking chance. It's a thorough stayer who's got grade one form, who might well, probably wouldn't, but would have got very close to Alboom Photo and Limerick in a two and a half mile uh, novices chase at grade two. So I think Duna Cost has got a cracking chance in the four miler. And you have to remember, Gordon Elliott has won this race three times in the last eight years. He's only had five runners, and his, one of his other runners was Noble Endeavour who would have finished probably second to Manila Rocco, so he certainly knows what it takes to win the race. In the Fred Winter, in the Fred Winter, I'm very, very, very keen on Style the Guard, trained by Nicky Henderson. It's hard to believe that Nicky Henderson, given all the juveniles that he's got, he's only got one entry in the Fred Winter. This horse is rated 137. He won at Newbury on his first start in, uh, in Britain. He beat Dr. Bartolo very, very impressively who has since bolted up a Warwick. He's gone up to a mark of 129. Uh, to style the guard made mince me to him. He's off a mark of 137. I think he's got a hell of a chance, and he's Nicky's only runner in the race. In the Close Brothers Novices Handicap Chase, I was all over the plotting shed for so long for this race. He's rated 150 over hurdles. He's down to 143 over fences. But I since went through the race today, and I said to myself, if I fancy the plotting shed at 143, there is no way he can beat any second now. Trained by Ted Walsh, only getting two pound, because any second now is a far better horse than the plotting shed. He's rated 145, he's guaranteed to get into the race. He's been running great at races against really good horses all season. He's trained by Ted Walsh, and don't be one bit surprised if a certain Orr Walsh rides the horse, because Willie's got nothing in the race. And he could be, and Barry Garrity might ride something else. So Ruby Walsh could be riding any second now in the in the Close Brothers, and um, in the in the uh, Brown Advisory plate. I've been last year's winner of the of the Close Brothers was obviously Tully East, who I think has got a cracking chance once again. He's been laid out for the race, but another one of my guilty pleasures has got a serious chance in that, and that's Le Prisien, trained by Paul Nichols. <laughs> <laughs> At this, he's doing it on purpose now. He's doing it on purpose. 
At this stage, I'm dangling over the cliff. Yeah. Uh, I like Bob Cattini. <laughs> <laughs> but if, nobody actually, remembers him. If, if you go back to his, if you go back to his run in the Ben Victor chase, the old Paddy Power, he he was given an awful lot to do that day. He was third behind Splash of Ginge. Second that day was Starkitect, who would have absolutely bolted up in the in the in the December race. He's off the same mark. He's off 150 and. Listening to Paul Nichols' quotes, he's got intensive schooling in the last couple of weeks. So I think Le Prisien can go really well. And but finally, last but not... Sorry, I have two more to go. Uh, in the, in the Bertens qualifier, some, uh, as I was going into the toilet at the break, I spoke to a guy who mentioned a horse to me. Uh, he mentioned a horse to me, and I totally agree. In the Bertens final, Louis Vac Pouch trained by Philip Hobbs, is made for the Pretemps final. He's a keen hold-up horse who won very impressively at Aintree in November. Third that day was Beer Goggles, who has since won a grade one. He's got up to a mark of one four five, but he's improving out of all recognition. And I think, um, I think Louis Vacpouch has got a cracking chance in the Pretemps. And finally, possibly my strongest fancy out of all the... Oh, yes, out, folks. My strongest fancy out of all the handicaps is... Don't touch it in the Grand Annual. Trained by Jessica Harrington, uh, this horse, lads, my God, this horse is well handicapped. Uh, he won a grade one race over Hurdles at Punchestown two years ago. Second that day was my beloved Brain Power. Third was Petty Mouchoir. And fourth was York Hill. He won a handicap chase at the Punchestown Festival last year off a mark of 144. He's only five pounds higher now. He has not worn cheek pieces since he won at the Punchdown Festival. He's been laid out for this race. You can guarantee that Cheek Pieces will be back on for the Grand Annual. His mark has stayed the same on 149. He's a grade one horse in the handicap and he's a son of Scorpion. What could go wrong? <laughs> right, ladies and gents, we got time for a few questions, but you're gonna have to be a bit quiet because otherwise we won't be able to hear them. And I'll, I'll just point to please just one at a time. So I'll go from the front backwards, just right here in front. Hang on a minute, you've just had about 50 naps for the festival, but the one, the one single, does it matter, irrespective of price? All right, one nap for the festival, David Jennings, irrespective of price. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Far out. I'm going to go for sizing John. Shush, shush, because otherwise I can't hear the, your man in front here. One of you really fancy Modus. David. What do you think of King's Soft's chances? Who was blatantly held up behind him? <laughs> yeah. In the um, Brown and Fairwell. Yeah, it's a good question. One or two at the moment. It's all standing seven times a night. David Pipe, this horse. I'm telling you, he's got a fucking enemy. Yeah, he, he does. It, 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 to quote uh, the questionnaire, uh, he has got a fucking engine, yeah. Which horse are we talking about? Uh, King Socks. Oh, right, right, okay. King Socks, trained by David Pipe. I have a feeling that there is about four or five horses trained by David Pipe that are seriously well handicapped at the festival. King Sock could, could potentially be one of them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he's just, I'd say the horse hasn't sparkled. They thought he was very good. I'd say they don't think he's quite as good now. He's been a bit disappointed. All right, let's here in front. Kansas City Chief in a third Yeah, Kansas City Chief. The thing is, when he bolted up at Doncaster, I thought he was a right horse, but he's been beat twice since, hasn't he, Paul? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah normally, yeah, everyone thinks it's a, the, the attempt is a big plot race, but in general, you want a horse going in there in good form. Will he get in? I don't know what he's saying. He'll get it. What's your rating? Oh, that's three four. Is he got the attempt only has about fifty entries in it? He might be a ground horse. It might be it might be the better ground. It might be. I don't I don't think that's a stupid I'm, I quite like the organist in the foot tents. Have a look at her. Here. Uh Redisha wins a triumph on the bridal kills. I don't think anything will win the time on the bridle. Um, I laid Radice and win two places, three places, four places on Saturday. I did my absolutely bollocks on the horse. I don't think this horse cannot jump and it hasn't beaten anything. And of course, apparently it had, it had jumped. Alan King was so disappointed with the way it had jumped. It, tr it scored him over 200 hurdles since. Uh, you know, and he jumped, and he jumped perfectly. 
He is a very good horse. The trainer is talking him up like he's a really, really good horse. Personally, I still think the Irish form is the best, and that's what I'm going with. Wouldn't surprise me. I, I've been won over by him. I wouldn't back him at the price he is now. OK, uh, uh, there's too many hands in one place. I, I, oh, oh, shut up! Otherwise, we'll never get him. This guy here. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Say again. I can't, you've got to talk one at a time, otherwise I can't hear you. Who was happier after the Red Mills? Pat Kelly, trainer presenting Percy, or Jessica Harrington, trainer of Our Duke? That's, that's a no-brainer. Uh, Jessica Harrington was far happier. Je the thing about Our Duke was, you have to remember, Our Duke was going into that race on the back of running okay in the, in the Irish uh, Gold Cup, made a mistake at the second last, and a no-run at all in the JN Wine. He'd had back problems. She's got him back, presenting Percy. I think Pat Kelly, by the way, Pat, Pat Kelly is an absolute genius. The man is a genius, and far be it from us to question him. There may be method to his madness, but I think that horse had a hard race. I hope he wins the RSA financially. You, you I hope the question. You asked yeah. the question, which was she was happier. Jess Garrett was happier than Pat Kelly. Now, I promised this guy here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the guy in front here with the glasses hasn't answered ask this question. Would you rather have balls sucked by Redition or Apple Shakira? Would I rather have my balls sucked by Redition or Apple Shakira? <laughs> Um, that's a very good question. Um, to be honest, to be honest, you get to a you get to a stage in life where you're where you're happy for for anything. So you know, I'll go I'll go eleven and ten on each of two. Um, in front here. Hang on, shush, shush, shush. Which horse? Chris's dream. Yeah. Yeah. Guys. I backed a horse last year. A great race. I backed a horse last year that won by an absolute mile in the Albert Bartlett. And when it got when it, when it got to the actual Albert Bartlett, then it, it was tailed off. When horses win by that far, horses are, other horses are either out of form or they're shy. The iron. You know, that's what you got away with. Horse might be brilliant, but he hasn't actually... He hasn't actually needed to race to win it, has he? You know what I mean? And he needs, he needs to be hardened to win that race. Uh, gentleman here in the uh, glasses, just there, second row. Right. Deal Destrabal. Now, Rich talked about the horse last night, Paul. What are the options? I asked him about that horse last night because I'm very interested in him. He's you know, basically run wherever he'll get in. And that's the problem because he's so low rated. He's, I think he's, I think he's, I think he's, I think he's one, three, four. Uh, you know, I guess, and that's right on the cusp of something like the Martin Pipe. Could squeeze into the Gold Cup as well. Like, you know, but it's, it's on the cusp, and he will run wherever he'll get in, and he'll run well. Okay, here, just uh, on, right on the left there, right in front of me there. <laughs> His cause of course is a sure thing for the cross country, Jennings. Uh, I, he, yeah. Funnily enough, right on cue, I was about to say that his biggest danger is Tiger Roll. Um, the two of them obviously went to school over the course last month and uh, they were really happy with, with, with what happened. Uh, cause the cause, I think it's taken a while to warm to himself this season, but it, he's gradually, gradually getting there. And the one question I did ask Gordon Elliott last week was, what results gave you most satisfaction out of all your six winners at the Cheltenham Festival last year? And he said, cause the cause is winning the cross country. He said he's a sable star, they absolutely love him. And you can absolutely guarantee that that horse will be trained to the minute to win his fourth race at the festival. He's, I, I prefer cause of causes to Tiger Roll. All right, straight in front of me here. Yeah. Can't hear him, shush. What was Rich Ritchie's nap last yeah. night? Get a bird, was it? Get a bird. Uh, next to you in the black cap. Yeah, he mentioned Jack Adam. I thought he was, shh. Uh, the gentleman asked, did he mention anything about Jack Adam? Yes, he did, uh, Paul. Yeah, I, I mean, he seems to think, they seem to think he's not the horse he was, but he's still gonna go for the Gold Cup. He's every right to go over the Gold Cup. He's been, you know, second, second, fourth. Nowhere else he can run, is it? Well, he can run. He can, you know, he's a strong traveler. He can't yeah. run in the right there. But, you know, he's still only nine. It's not a brilliant Gold Cup. 
Could you get Patrick Wright in as well? Patrick Mullins is great. Um, I, have you just you just asked one, didn't you? So I think it would be fair to. Fair, did you just ask something? Who hasn't asked a question then? Go on, go, go, go. So if Super Sunday was running in the champion hurdle, would he have a chance? It's kind of a... a yeah. I think, I think he'd stay on to finish third. Right. Yeah. Uh, next. Well, I know, I, I, I know he won a gold cup, so he wasn't underrated after that, but it's one poor run in his entire career. In his entire career, he's won one bad race. And that was last time, which has made him, which has made him two and a half times the price he probably should be for this. So I think I think he can I think he can win again. Um, right, I'm going to have to go a bit further back before I come forward again because it's not fair on those guys otherwise. Right, gentleman with a uh, I was going to say guy with a beer can in his hand and narrows it down, doesn't it? A gentleman there right in front of me. Who wins the county hurdle? We mentioned that, haven't we, Kiels? Yeah, Ivanovic Go Ivanovic Gorbachev was the one I like. I'm not I'm not sure he'll win, right? But he's twenty to one now. I guarantee you it'll be single figure price on the day. So you just have to back him. Uh, there's another horse called Flying Tiger who, uh, who, who won the um, Fred Winter last year. He's been tra travelling around in these graded races, not getting the strong pace that he needs. Here go well. Uh, go on, Jennings. I go for a hairbreath. A hairbreath hasn't run since winning the big race at Sandown before Christmas. Um, there is somebody holding up what looks like a cu cu cucumber from here. I'm not sure what it is. Oh, it's just the programme rolled up. Um, Yeah. All right, who finished second the other day to Global Citizen? It's an interesting shout, isn't it? He's an extremely talented horse. It's a horse I've backed loads of times on the flat as well. He needs to learn to settle. I mean, you never know. You know, one run, it can take all the freshness out of him and he'll settle. He actually jumped brilliantly at times. He's, a, he's quite an interesting horse because he's very talented. You know, I, ha I would actually hate to put anybody on the 33 or one shot anyway. Um, you know, if he runs, why not back him? If you like him, back him. He doesn't have a chance. <laughs> right, I'll, I'll come around like this. So, yes. Who is your lay of the festival? Who is your lay of the festival? Yeah, Apple Shakira. I'm sure there's three or four horses in that race with better form than she has. David? Um, mine, oh, I hate saying this because I absolutely love him, but my lay of the festival will be on the soul. Well, on the basis that I'd rather back a seven to four shot than a threes on shot, my lay, I think, would have to be Boo Verdere. I do think that there is a... I do, I do think there's a chance he'll be beaten. I don't think he's a certainty. Listen, he's the likeliest winner, but I don't think he's a certainty. You've got the possibility of Fahim coming back to his best. A whole load of lurkers. Who uh, are the lurkers? Do you think there is lurkers? I think there are lurkers, yeah. So I, there you go. We gotta move on. We gotta move on. You asked the question, right? Uh, then let's move round. Have you go 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 straight in front of me? That was mentioned last night. Vanitor in the Grand Dan. You'll be pottering around the back this season. And yeah, Luke Harvey, who unfortunately was snowed in, he was so keen on Vanitor in the Grand Annual. He he had a whole compelling case made for Vanatu in the Grand Annual, far better than I could ever do. But he was very keen. That, and and Luke is actually. I know he is. Broadcaster of the year, like you once were, Nick. And uh, but the, uh, that was a that was bizarrely, bizarrely, that was actually a compliment. But uh, I, he, he's actually quite a good tipster, isn't he? Like yourself, Nick. He's quite a good tipster. But he really fancied Vanatu in the Grand Annual. Uh, um, now there's a guy holding a can out at sort of right angles there. No, 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 you could have one. It's not fair otherwise. With Kelso being abandoned at the weekend, do you think Kim Bailey will reroute first flow to the Supreme? Right, with Kelso, yeah, fair enough. With Kelso being abandoned, will Kim Bailey reroute first flow? To the, will he run in? I don't think he's tempted. The first half of that question started off deplorably, but it ended quite well. But um, the first flow, like, First Flow was a good horse on soft ground, and, and he's visually he's been very impressive, but I think 
vindication is the one where they're really love and the baby in the in the ballymore, the ballymore, whatever. Um, a, 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 a tall guy here, uh, just behind you, there. Uh, how far does burning ambition win the fox hunters by? How far does burning ambition win the fox hunters by? Uh, it's actually one of the horses that was written on my list, but I was getting daggers from these two, so I said I better stop. Uh, burning ambition is a very, very short price. Well, he's by far the most likely winner of the race. It's like, basically, it's like me being on this couch with these two old fogies. He's the youngest horse in the race. They're all pensioners, and he's an improving horse that's only ran a couple of times. Uh, like, that form behind Gil Gamboa is cracking form, and, and he, he, he deserves to be favoured. Right, uh, yes, right in front of me. He's mentally kind of dogger, is he not? <laughs> Jennings, you must love this Mengli Khan, surely. Apparently, um, he schooled last week and, and it was the best piece of work he's done in a while. So, look, he, he is the forgotten horse in the race. Yeah, he has a chance, yeah. He's just not trustworthy. Just not trustworthy. He finished, he finished last more times than he won when he, was, when he was with Hugo Palmer. He's run out that time. I'm not convinced he was in form. I'm getting to beat him either. Just don't trust the horse at all. All right, down the front here again. In I'm say your uh, JLT. Invitation only. Which race would you run him in? He runs in the JLT. All right, uh, here. On oh, me. Sorry. You right, guys? Uh, so, uh, what, what, what do you think of Move Winner Times' chances in the Close Brothers? It's for the, it's for the, it's for the uh, streaming. What do you think of Move Winner Times' chance in the Close Brothers? Horse who was second in that great bet for Hurdle you were talking about he earlier. Is, he is said to have been an. He is said to have been another one that's been to Martinstown. He's, he's obviously got some very decent form. Uh, he, he ran in the bet for Hurdle last year, was second to Barry Andy. He's a very, very decent horse. I'm not, I'm not convinced he's got it up there, to be honest. And he can be a bit clumsy. Uh, he's very talented. Quite whether he's got the ticker for it, I'm not sure. He's exactly the type of horse that I should love. Yes. He's exactly the type of horse that I should absolutely love, but I absolutely hate him. I think he's got loads of ability, but I don't, I don't think you can trust him. No, 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 no. I'm going to move on. We've got loads of people asking. Go on. He's had nine handicap winners in, nine, in 11 years. Uh, who's his handicap winner this year? So David Pipe has had nine handicap winners in 11 years. We've mentioned quite a few possibles for that yard, Paul. You've had a quite enough old season. Anything that really stands out for you? Uh, yeah, so I think he has had a quiet season. Uh, I'm not convinced something will come. What, you know, I would say watch the money. Uh, no, I'm not having Moonracer. Moonracer's great. He's been tried at the highest level. He's gone. I'm not convinced about Vanitur either. To be honest, I don't know where it's going to come from. I'm not convinced he's going to have a great, great meeting. Right, over here, the gentleman in the white T-shirt with the glasses. Say, say again, I'm sorry. I... Guys, 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 I can't hear this, Jen. Yes, he did. He said quite a lot about it. Uh, Dave, just remind me. Yeah, he, he won he won a race obviously last time. Uh, punch, it was Punch's time, wasn't it? Yeah, he won a race at Punch's time. This is Salvia. He was extremely impressive. Absolutely bolted up. It was possibly the worst juvenile hurdle you could find in any country, possibly including Scandinavia. It was desperate race. He absolutely bolted up. Could have won by triple the margin he did. The funny thing about the three of Willies in the Triumph Hurdle, I'd say you could offer seven to four each a three what Ruby Walsh rides. Because but all three have a, have a lot of ability. Mr. Judicator has obviously won his grade one. But Saldier is a horse that Rich, Rich really likes Saldier. And I think he was, he, was, he was basically a second or third choice as his best bet in the meeting, I think. All right. Uh, gentlemen there. <laughs> Right, uh, the question, if you didn't hear it, was they always talk about a north south divide in the UK. Do we think tra horses trained in the north of England or in Scotland will win any races at the festival? I don't, no, no, to be honest, I don't give a shit where they're trained. No, you know what I mean? If you've got a good horse, obviously the most obvious one is waiting patiently. If waiting patiently runs, I think he'll win. Obviously, John Quinn's got look my way. He will have a far better chance of winning the race if he runs in if he runs in the Fred Winter. I can't pick any others off the top of my head, but you know, trainers in the north they can all train. The problem is money, not trainers. 
you know what I mean? It's, it's all about where the money is and where the good horses are going. Give, give any, you know, any of the top trainers in the north a decent horse and they'll do a job with it. Uh, yeah. Now, there's somebody with a hand up uh, so far away, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get you unless I get you now, so shout. Would you lay my tent or yours for a place? Nine a million years, no. No, 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 he will run his race. At some point in his life, his race isn't going to be good enough to get into the frame, but he doesn't look a lot worse than he was last year, and he doesn't have to be any better than he was last year to hit the frame. And also, he's done something that he hadn't done this time last year, which is win a race at Cheltenham. There's a hand over in the far dis... Yeah, the one that's doing that. Go on. That's a good question, and they both deserve to mention, and they didn't get one. Total Recall or Kalatovic, they had a, a rethink with Total Recall and banged him in the Gold Cup. Yeah, I think Ruby will ride Kalatovic, and I think Paul Town and the ride uh, Total Recall. I think they think that Kalatovic is operating at a different level to Total Recall. He's the kind of horse who could be very, very... He could be the superstar. We just don't know. He's obviously got a pathetic profile for a Gold Cup winner in that he's basically fallen on his last two starts over fences. But you know what? If he stood up in the Irish Gold Cup, he could have won by six or seven lengths. He could be three to one favour for the Gold Cup. So if you do fancy Cologne to Vic, there, there are a lot of positives. And Ruby, I think, will write. Thank you, David. I'm going to take two more questions. I've got one there who the guy's arm's about to fall off. And one in front here, and then and then we're done. Yes, sir. Slate House. Now Colin tizard has been talking him up. You know thing when somebody asks a question and mention the horse. So he mentioned Slate House there. There was three guys over here. It was basically it was basically like he had just won the race. They were like. Yeah. <laughs> I went and said, do you think that Slate House is massively overpriced at 33 to 1? I'm suggesting you think he might be a shade on the big side at 33 to 1. Oh, good man. What a man. I have, I have two words for you. After time answer. <laughs> Stuff. And one here, last one. It better be good. It, you promised me it'd be good. It better be good. So I, I listen to you guys all the time. So when you say you've got a good bet, how much is a good bet when you when you guys place a bet? How much do you put on? Is a good bet? Go on, Kiels. If you have a if you if you have a good bet, what's a good bet? I think any any time right. money leaves your wallet, it's a good bet. Hang on a minute. First of all, this is live stream, so there's half a chance that Mrs. Keeley is watching. The right? <laughs> big fucking problem there. Now, so about a tenner, fifteen quid. Uh, yeah. I tell you what, when we first, when I first moved in with my missus, we're talking we're talking twenty. No, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> No, come on, nobody, no, nobody, no, nobody uh, else has, just wait. Yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, yeah. Can I have a little chat? No, yeah, later, 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 later. Yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a Hopefully, hopefully that will stop us from answering the question. Right, I, think, I, think that's the, I, I think that's the Cheltenham preview equivalent of a streaker, wasn't it? But it didn't quite work. <laughs> When I moved in with my missus 25 years ago, I'm, st I'm sitting in the living room and I rang up to have a bet. I had a tenner each way. She went, a tenner? <laughs> she had no idea that it actually meant a score. Imagine how much fucking trouble I would be in if she had any idea now. Um, I, you know, I, I am not a massive punter. Part of the reason, because you can't fucking get on with most people these days. Right? My, you know, I'd say my maximum, my maximum bet is probably two grand. I, I would have... My, you know, my average bet is a one of each way. Like, you know what I mean? I, I bet at big prices. You can't get two grand to 16 to one. Like, you know. I once lost 10 grand in Vegas playing poker in a 17 hour drinking session. Um, 
but I did win it playing roulette the day before, so I was level on the week. On, on the week. Uh, but no, I'm, you know, I'm not a massive punter. Gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much indeed. That is all we've got time for, I'm afraid. Please give a big hand to Paul Keeley and David Jennings. And thank you very much for coming. Thank you for watching at home. If you've been watching at home, it's been, uh, it's been a lot of fun. You've been a great audience. Uh, I don't know whether the bar's still open, but I suspect it is. Uh, enjoy Shelton, thanks very much. <laughs>